Hey, wow. happy Here Tuesday. It's Tuesday today. Yeah, I don't know what day it is. I've <laughs> yeah, been you on, had a long week last move. week. I've been on the move lately. I don't know where I am or when I am. You know, I got so I got home on Saturday. Yeah. I'll tell one stupid little story and then we can like do our job. Yeah, we got to let people tune so, in and stuff. So I got home on Saturday and I putted around in the afternoon. I landed. My flight got delayed. I didn't land until like 430. So oh, I'm, putter, I'm puttering around. I ended up going to bed around, I don't know, it was like 11 o'clock here. Right. And I slept straight through till noon the next day. Holy. Yeah. Like apparently there was like, there was just people in my home, my children, who had been warned that should yeah. I be awoken, there would be hell. Don't wake the dragon. Yeah, I didn't even do it. I didn't even do it. So, well, nicely done. Yeah, Welcome back to Ontario. Here we are. Here I am in the nation's capital. Yeah. And welcome to Japanese Knife 101, everybody. Or Ottawa, if you are unfamiliar with Canadian geography, for whatever mm -hmm. reason. So, well, so what we do, we used to do this all the time, but now we do it once a month. Japanese Knife 101 is Knifeware's version of, oh, it's like an AMA, and ask me anything. We usually have a little bit of a theme. Usually Kevin's with me, but now we, we got Nathan today, so at least now you can tell us apart. Right, and just barely. Yeah. yeah. It's still another guy with glasses and a beard. Yeah. And yeah. long hair. But at least they've had a haircut in the last three years. Yeah. So, but, you know, today we're going to cover the top 10 most asked questions. Now, I... Nathan had a list, and I changed the list to That's be the fine. questions that I get asked most often. Yeah, I'm in well, the store a little bit more. Yeah, I don't really work in a knife for a store much these days. Yeah, so I figured I would I would come at it from that angle. What are the yeah. ten most questions? And I don't know. I tried to put them in like order a little bit, but yeah, I don't you know, know if it was if it was the top ten questions I get asked, it it would just be. Do you ship to America? Do you ship to Brazil? Do you ship to China? Do you ship to Australia? Yeah. Down the yeah. list, because I, I just work online these days. Spoon Monkey's got a good question that I didn't think of, but we'll get, we okay. can, we'll, we'll do yeah. it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, actually, I, we've got a we've got a blog and a video coming out about this topic soon, mm -hmm. so I'm excited to get into that. We should do the news first, maybe, and then we can. Yeah, let's get through our housekeeping. So I'll start yep. with the easy stuff. I'm going to tell you to like this video and subscribe to the channel. There's only 17 people watching. So odds are you have already subscribed to the channel because you know we're here. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, when if you, there's a little bell icon. I, I really didn't know this for the longest time, and I've said it a bunch because Nathan's <laughs> told me to. But if you click on the little bell icon, like on your phone or whatever, you'll get, like, push notifications. So then, like, when we go live or whatever, you'll get a kind of an in-the-moment update as to what we're doing. Which right. is kind of nice if you like what we're up to. Yeah, if God you don't, forbid you want to actually watch the show, uh, it'll notify yeah. you when when it's on. Yeah. So, um, but you've got some real news. I just did the housekeeping. Yeah, uh, I do have some real news. Um, well, I one real bit of news is uh, Chris Lord was just in Calgary, uh, and it was really fun to have you here for a week, shooting lots of YouTube videos. So, uh, for those of you subscribed to the channel. Keep your eyes peeled. Over the next several months, we'll be uh, Chris will be joining the cast of, of regular video hosts again, uh, and we've got some great stuff coming up with him. Uh, we'll talk more about that later. Maybe tell a couple of stories. Um, really big piece of news. This is something that starts next week. We are sharpening for uh, relief for for uh, refugees from the Ukraine. Um, there's this obviously. I think we all know what's going on in the Ukraine right now, but there's this uh, really Nathan. great parody. Yeah, Nathan, I'm I'm sorry, but I'm gonna call you out just a touch. It's just okay. Ukraine. It's not okay. the Ukraine. Yeah. Okay. Well, I failed uh, geometry, so there you no. go. No. Uh, yeah, I just I, I'm just saving you some some headache there. Just, I appreciate just it. Ukraine, not the Ukraine. Okay. Relief for Ukraine. There um, you go. <laughs> But there's this great charity started by Chef Jose Andres, uh, who he started the World Central Kitchen, he calls it. And they basically help with disaster relief.
uh, you know, any kind of disaster, natural, environmental, but also humanitarian crisis and, uh, and social disasters. So um, they are set up on, I believe, eight points on uh, the Ukrainian border right now uh, with basically kitchens to help feed people that are, are, are leaving to other countries, um, as well as supporting t- uh, restaurants in 12 cities in Ukraine. Uh, see? I got it there. Uh, it's 12 did, yeah. cities in Ukraine, uh, basically to help people that are in trouble right now. And so uh, next week, March 21st to 27th, all of the money that you spend on knife sharpening and knifeware will be donated directly to World Central Kitchen. Uh, I think last time we did a, an event like this, we raised over $16,000 between mm. all four cities, all four stores. So uh, I think we've got a pretty good shot at doing even better. You know, I'm, I'm hoping we can get at least up to $20,000. Twenty thousand yeah. dollars, but then the Knifeware Foundation will also match uh, that donation and be giving that to the Canadian Red Cross. That's pretty incredible. Yeah, yeah. So if you live in a city with a Knifeware, uh, you can bring your knives in next week, and all of your money mm-hmm. will go directly to to them. Um, if you don't live in a city with a Knifeware store, uh, you can donate directly to World Central Kitchen or, or or one of many other charities that I imagine are are helping uh, helping out right now. So that's a big piece of news. Um, also, the Ken of Inglewood, our sister sister store, has a, a sale on right now. 15 to 25% off all safety razors, straight razors, and shavettes. So if you want shaving to not suck and actually be be pretty enjoyable, uh, they're, they're there to help you out. Ken of Inglewood.com or the store in Inglewood. You can also visit your local knifeware store, and all of the same products are on sale. Yeah, we got, we got the greatest hits here in Ottawa. I'm pretty sure Edmonton and Vancouver set up the same as us. So we got a good a good mm-hmm. selection. But it's like there's only like one razor that's not. Yeah, I think it's just like the 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 oh my god the Rockwell razors I think are the only ones that aren't. I shaved yeah. two Fridays ago. I don't know if you can tell, but I shaved before oh, yeah. I came out. Yeah, yeah. So you can see that it's like li- slightly lighter yeah. in here. Yeah, totally. You know, <laughs> you but I, I, did, I did my cheeks too. Mm-hmm. But it's weird. My beard is all messed up. Like this side of my beard grows really fast, and this yeah. one not so much. I got to trim this one back with scissors all the time. Mm-hmm. Well, I find I like to shave my neck. Uh, I, I I do shave fully in the summer, but I like to shave my neck when I have a beard because it just mm-hmm. looks like I just have a neck beard. Otherwise, it's yeah. not my favorite look. <laughs> no, and uh, and I, I use a guy that was called neck beard. Yeah. Oh, uh, you mean Owen? Yeah. No, it wasn't okay. Owen. This is pre-Owen. Okay. It's pre-Owen. I, can't, I don't even know Neckbeard's, Neckbeard's real name anymore, if we're being honest. So, well, here. <laughs> you know what? Nathan had some news, so bring yep. your knives in, get them sharpened, and help out some people who are helping lots of people. Yep. I think that's nice. You should, if you're unfamiliar with Jose Andres, you should check him out anyways. Mm-hmm. The guy's super talented. And over the last yeah. 10 years or so, like he's gone from like, I don't know if he operates in the fine dining world at all anymore. This thing for a really long time was like ultra high end yeah. fine dining in Washington. And yeah. then, um, and now he's made like, this is what he does. This is what he's known yeah. for now. Definitely worth checking him out. Well, um, and I really I- like what they do too, because they don't just show up and dump a ju- dump a bunch of food on the shore and, and piss off or, or, yeah. you know, put local restaurants out of business. They, they hire local cooks and chefs and they help to rebuild uh, critical yeah. food infrastructure in countries where it's been devastated yeah. again, by really any kind of disaster. So yeah. They, I know they, they made a really long term in their thinking. They made a really big different difference. And I think it was Puerto Rico, wasn't it a few years ago? They were down there. Like yeah. after some yeah, they've been, here. Yeah, uh, there, uh, the Philippines, not too long ago, bunch of bunch yeah. of places. Yeah. So, what do we want to do? Do we want to address some of? You want to do our questions and then hop into some of the other ones? What do you want to sure, do? Yeah. Well, while we're while we're getting started again today, the topic is the top ten most asked questions about about Japanese knives uh, yeah. or just at knife in general. Um, but if you have questions in the meantime, I already see a couple good ones. Uh, just mm-hmm. pop them in the comments, and we'll that'll kind of fuel the fire later in the show. For sure. So here, this is my list. This is what I think we get asked the most. Maybe it differs right. from store to store. Yeah, but I'm curious. I I mostly work online on our social media and help desk nowadays, so I bet we've yeah. got some different stuff. So when you're following along here, 
I want you to think that you've just walked into the store or maybe I'm at like the Japanese summer festival and you have no idea that this store or website or any of it exists. Right. These are the people asking me these questions, I think. Right. Okay. So the first one, number 10, I did it reverse like I'm David Letterman too. Oh, very nice. Yeah, I was, I was proud of that. So what makes this knife different than my knives at home? Right. A lot. Yeah. A lot. I, I yeah. like how you worded this question because a lot of folks just assume that Japanese knives are, are better. Um, and they're better at certain things for sure, but so are German knives and so are, you know, lots of different kinds of knives. Yeah. Well, the biggest difference and the one that we talk about the most, mm -hmm. like when we're doing this show or if it's Sharp Knives Rock or if you're in the store, it comes down to the steel, right? So mm -hmm. generally speaking, a Japanese knife is going to be made out of a harder steel than a European or a North American knife, right? Right, right. So now I'm going to quiz you back to when you were, uh, um, uh, you know the answer anyways, but why do we give a shit about the hardness? Well, the hardness um, dictates a couple of things, but most importantly, how long the knife stays sharp, uh, as well as how thin you can make it and how, how sharp you can make it. It's, I mean, it's really more than anything what makes the difference in performance. Yeah. You know, that, that four by four to Ferrari kind of analogy that we use a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I find like when we talk about steel hardness, it just kind of gives you an idea. It, you know what? Hardness is something that we can measure and we can link it to performance. I think that's why mm -hmm. knife makers worry about hardness so much. Because like, you know, you could talk about you know, the, the content or the makeup of one steel versus another, and it's yeah. going to be lost on most people. But if you can give uh, yeah. them a number that you can say 59 versus 60, 60 is better, right? Totally. So I think that's... Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a concept that's easy enough for somebody who doesn't know anything about knives to understand. Um, yeah. But also it dictates what the knife can and can't do, too. Yeah, and it's a really it's really simple. I mean, it's a bit of an oversimplification sometimes, but it's really simple for us to say: hard knives are better for meat, fish, and vegetables. Softer knives are better for bones and frozen food, and kind of break it up so that in people's minds, it's really easy for them to go, "Okay, don't use my knife for this. Do use my knife for this." Exactly. Right. So, yeah, because a lot of one of the things you can you can tie in is uh, as things get more brittle. Or as they get harder, I kind of gave the spoiler there. As they get harder, they get more brittle, right? So, yeah, and it's important to realize too that uh, harder doesn't necessarily mean stronger. Sometimes, uh, yeah, you know, depending on how hard the steel is. But my my father in law made that mistake, thinking that you know harder steel was more was just tougher. You could just beat on it more, yeah. and uh, and the knife will tell you uh, that that's not the case. Yeah, you know what else is really hard glass glass yeah 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 not very tough though no so well here Let's but see don penny we... is don penny here uh hopes you've got some index cards to throw around like letterman oh, Did you bring i'll any? find something i got there's always shit to throw around no worry you got some eight and a half by 11s there you can toss around yeah i got at least this i got at least that you can't I'll toss tear it up. Still I still need it. Yeah. God, come on, guys. You think I practiced before today? Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Well, there's, you know what? Yeah, let's just, I want to answer. There are some good questions here. I want to answer them. Yeah. Some of them are so, kind of building on what we're talking about, too. Yeah. Like, um, I'm going to go through them fast. Spoon Monkey, what's the difference between a $150 knife and an $800 knife made of the same steel? We're going to talk, I'm going to lump that into one of our questions coming up. I, th I think um, I actually put that in my list of questions originally. Mm, I did, yeah, because well, and I, I didn't include it in mine because I'm a bonehead. Come I guess. on, Chris. MRK wants to know: Do you ship to the ISS? I'm sure if someone on the International Space Station wanted a knife, we could figure it out. And they're probably not allowed to have knives up there. But, but yeah, um, that might be a a, <laughs> a hazard. I don't know. 
Maybe Amazon will start shipping up there soon and we can get our knives on Amazon. Yeah. So Chris Rowe says, what's the best steel for balance between hardness and edge retention and family mm. members not quite treating said knife with the same care and therefore damage? I've got some votes, you know. Yeah. Um, Let's hear it. I like, I like Ginnan steel for that. Mm -hmm. Like the Harayuki Kokuto, I think, handles some abuse a little bit better than other knives. I also really like um, the Cobalt Special that the Kurosaki Sasame is made out of. I bought right. one of those. I was tasked with the job of finding a knife for my father-in-law. And at the time, I wasn't too sure how he would handle a Japanese knife. Because for the most part... They just had like stuff picked up at Ikea or the department store, whatever. And it went into the dishwasher. And that's, you know what? I'm not going to give anyone a hard time over that because I've got knives at my house that go into the dishwasher. Sure. You know, I care I about the dishwasher. Too. Than, yeah. You know, obviously I'm not putting like my Fujiwara Denka in the dishwasher, but I'm definitely like, you know, I got like a handful of Kuhn pairing knives. Oh, yeah. That I totally, don't yeah. particularly fuss over. No, they're in another no, dishwasher. If I if I had a dishwasher, my Henkels would probably go in there when I was done with it. Yeah. So yeah, I would say I like getting something up a little bit. Uh, you know, like AUS8 VG10 mm. are great answers as well. But I think if you right. want to get a little more performance out of them, like if you're willing to take the risk just a touch more, I think the extra hardness that you get out of Ginsan or that that cobalt special is a really good one right odds are though you're probably looking at like vg10 gives you the biggest like like it's, it's a really good balance between yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, so i'm i'm gonna elaborate on that a little bit because basically my, my answer is the same as yours but i think it really depends on the individual knife um because I have given people who are tougher on knives VG10 knives, but because they were too thin, they got chipped. And so I would say get something that's around the hardness of VG10, but get something that's thicker. I got uh, I got somebody in my family in Masakage Kiri. I love the knife, mm -hmm. uh, but they tried to cut a lobster with it, and that went really yeah. badly um, because that's a very, very thin knife. Um, what yeah. I ended up kind of getting them to upgrade to or change to was, uh, I think, like a Fujimoto Hammer Tone. Um, Haruyuki's are really good for that too, like the Kokodo or, or mm -hmm. Goma or Mugi, because they're all thicker behind the edge, and that steel isn't yeah. gonna chip or crack or get get smashed up as easily. You know what? I've got a Haruyuki Kuma, is made out of SRS 15, which is yeah. a powdered steel. It's a lot harder than a lot of the other things we've been talking about. And to be honest, I really do. I've really put it through its paces. I've split a lobster with it, like crack the claws yeah. and everything and i didn't chip it i also kind of know what i can get away with yeah uh, no, knowing how to use a knife i think makes a big difference as to how yeah because yeah, i put i've put my denka through like you know chicken wishbone and and other yeah. fairly hard things and it's been fine but yeah. you know you and i know what we're doing gotta, a little better than you kind of got yeah you got to move confidently as i yeah, I, yeah. so to kind of Chris gave us a follow up question a little bit further down, saying, "Is it safer, sadly, just going stainless?" Probably, because yep. the thing with carbon steel is that we're less concerned, like the chipping and all of that. That's all going to be like the conversation's more or less the same. You know, you take the steel type into account, you take the you take the hardness into account, whatever. It's the rust, right? So. If you're okay with giving it a bit of a scrub, yeah, then you're fine. You know, like, um, you know, scrub the rust off here and there. You'd be surprised how quickly the rest of your family would learn. And if you give them a hard enough time, they will avoid the knife to save having to hear you <laughs> lecture them. About totally, it. totally. You know, I got my so, dad a carbon steel yeah. knife, um, but he's also the kind of guy that like has a turntable and knows how to take care of records properly yeah. and polishes his own shoes and you know will take good care of his car you know he's that kind of person that takes good care of things that he knows cost money mm -hmm. so if it's that kind of person by all means if it's not stainless is probably better i mean there's there's nothing wrong with stainless steel there's a lot of really good stainless yeah. steels out there that work very similarly to carbon steel except they're just 
easier to take care of. Yeah. That Kuma, that Haruyuki knife that I'm talking about that I have, to put into yep. perspective, I've got some knives. I have a handful of knives that cost more than $700. I don't have a ton, right. but I've got a handful. One or two. I think that Kuma, I think it sells for 305 the 210 yep. Kuma. Yeah. And I think that's probably my favorite knife right now. Yeah. You know, For like and it, more professionally. Yeah. Yeah. I got them. I got the Kuroshu as well. And that one's up there. But I think yeah. like for this conversation, I think the Kumas are are great, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, don't be bummed out because you think cuz there's it's not like it was 25 years ago like there's some really quality stainless steels yeah steel science has come a very long way in the past yeah. few decades so damon our mm -hmm. buddy damon specter says rockwell is the perfect scale it tells you some information if you know what it means and sells knives when people don't know what it means because 61 is better than 58 yeah 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 it's it's simple enough that uh you know a lay person like you or I could understand. I mean, you and I know about steel, but I don't think either of us especially care to go into carbon percentages or numbers yeah. like that. Everybody thinks they need to walk in slow motion past me. Now it's just like doing Michael Jackson dance moves as every time he walks past, Ellie yeah. walks like walking in slow motion. Yeah. If only they knew. I got dinner and a show over here. Mm. Okay, so... Do, 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 do. Well, why don't why don't we move on to the next the next commonly asked oh. question in a bit? No, I want to get caught up a little bit before I lose before I lose All track. Right. So Blixy asking, when should you oil your carbon steel knife? We'll probably yep. go into more detail a little later on. I find oiling a knife, if it's a knife that is used very often, you might never have to oil it. Um, I find I generally recommend oiling a knife before it goes into storage. Or if you tend to struggle with rusting, um, if it's rusting fairly often, if it's rusting a little faster than you thought, think it should, I would get in the habit of rubbing some oil on it as like after you've washed and dried it. But right. if it's not giving you a hard time, Blixie, I wouldn't bother with it. Yeah. You know, it's Especially more of Especially if you a, live somewhere dry. Like if you live in a really, like if you live in the tropics, maybe, maybe oil yeah. it more often, but... Yeah, Ottawa gets quite humid during the summer. Like if you lived here, I would say oil your knives. If you're not using them every two weeks, I would put a bit of oil on them just to make sure they yep. make it. Uh, DJ Sergioto, I think they're they're over in Europe. Uh, yeah. Who's the blacksmith behind the Kobayashi knives? I don't know. I don't know. I know Kobayashi himself is more of a sharpener. Right, um, yeah. Um, if you tune in next week, uh, yeah. I'll just plug our other show real quick. Now it's Nerdy Power Hour. Uh, we're actually talking about Master Knife Sharpeners next week. So Kobayashi yeah. may come up. But uh, Naoto is, of all of us, he's the one that speaks Japanese. And uh, yeah. But more so than that, he is our like ambassador to, to Japan. And so he, he yeah. knows all the, the secrets. Well, yeah. a lot of the secrets this kind of stuff. as many as they're going to share right i think the <laughs> yeah. way Kobe does business and this is like this is kind of speculative like don't quote mm. me but i think he does he works in very much the way that a lot of knife makers in sakai work where he purchases his blades from someone else and yeah. finishes them himself yeah, and that's right? pretty standard practice in a lot of places. Yeah, well, like, if you look at, like, you know, like, let's look at, like, Kotetsu, Kotetsu's for a minute. Like, we know that the blacksmith is Iketa-san. Right. Right? But the person who's on the box is Shibata-san because Shiba sharpens them. And it's kind of like, right. I touched it last, right? Like, that happens a lot. Yeah. So, Well, especially, yeah. like... You know that I think some of the a lot of people watching know this, but uh, maybe not everybody realizes just how much work the sharpener does. Like they take a, a raw piece of steel that looks kind of like this, and they turn that into a knife. And so they're like yeah. they're touching every single part of this knife to shape it and perfect it and uh, and make it make it beautiful and perfect. And so it's a lot of work, and the skill and techniques that they use will 
do quite a bit to determine how well it cuts. Yeah. So that was a bit of a merry-go-round there, DJ, yeah. to tell you that I don't know the answer. So. Yeah. Well, Sergio's always got good questions, so I'm sure there'll sure. be a couple more we can answer. Uh, ba -bum -bum. Don oh. Penny says that he doesn't worry about people messing up his knives because he can just come down here and we'll fix them. That's true. We can if you live within spitting distance of a knifeware. You can just yep. wander in and get your knives taken care of. Uh, you can mail them in too. There's a option on the website. If you get them mailed in, odds are Nauto does them. So unless you really don't want to, <laughs> um, you know, unless it's like outrageous for you to, if you'd rather save a few bucks and send it to Ottawa, you know, you can always do that too. Totally. What else we got to do? Um, let's, you know what, Nathan, let's just hammer through these questions and then we'll get to question number nine. Sure. Cause it's Sounds really good. more about answering people's questions than me deciding what you want to hear. Yeah. <laughs> okay. It's more entertaining. So DJ had a second, he had a two parter there. Yeah. Um, two questions. Fujiwara, you say on the website that he's credited with the invention of Nishiji finish and San Mai stainless cloud with carbon core. Can you please share the sources? Do you know what it is? It's that he said so. Yeah. Essentially. Yeah, that's, that's it. I mean, yeah, for a lot of this information, we we just go right to the source. Um, yeah. Uh, that As far as we know, he was the first blacksmith who started making stainless clad carbon knives. I think, I don't know, was that like 25 years ago or so? I feel like I remember hearing that. But that's, I think that's what we've been told. Yeah. yeah. He was the first. He was the first known blacksmith. Like somebody else might have done it first, but as far as like selling knives, uh, yeah. that anybody got their hands on, he was he was the first one. And then eventually, eventually Takeda started doing it, and you know the Masakage guys started doing it. Like yeah. they started factory laminating the steel after after that. Yeah. But he was he was the first, and he did, he still does it from scratch for his what. Uh, the Danka and Danka. Yeah. And that's why, you know, to go kind of go back to uh, you know, we had the question about a four hundred dollar knife versus an eight hundred dollar knife. The biggest difference between like, let's I don't know, put a Danka two ten beside a Koishi two ten. They're both Algami super with a stainless steel jacket, but Fujiwara adds that step, right, of forge welding it himself, which then increases you know, increases the work, increases the performance, and therefore the cost. So that's one of the things when we're comparing like a $400 knife against an $800 knife, or even a $200 knife against an $800 knife, right? So, um, but yeah, you know what, uh, DJ, I, we were, that came from Fujiwara himself. Yeah. Um, you know what? I, I, just, uh, I just phoned a friend aka Nauta, who was walking by and he said mm -hmm. he said there's there is some you know hard to say for sure you know around yeah. the same time other people like Taka, people in takafu started doing it as well yeah um, several it's, it's maybe it's like the know. space race What's you that? know everyone every, oh. is kind of like the space race everyone had the same idea and yeah, he it just is. stick his flag in the moon first you know? Yeah, because I don't think it was like, as far as like the idea, it wasn't like, you know, he, he went on a spirit quest and, you know, some mystical being told him to do it. Like, I think it was probably a, a thing a lot of people were probably trying to do for a while, but just couldn't maybe figure out the process of. Um, ba -ba -ba -bum. E30 Birdie, I'm worried about buying the girlfriend anything better like powdered steel as some seem to be a bit chippy. So Victoria, mm. you know what? I can get a Victorinox really sharp. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah do it totally. up. If that's what works. That's what works. You know, my my partner uses a, a Ginsan knife that we used to sell mm -hmm. and hasn't hasn't damaged it or chipped it. You know, I might not be thrilled if it went in the dishwasher, but I also wouldn't cry. Like if you want to upgrade, it. yeah. Something like AUS six or you know, VG ten Ginsan. Haruki Mugi. AUS eight. You can't kick yeah. shit out of it. To be honest. I don't see a lot of those coming back chipped. Like it's been no. a while again since I worked in the store, but no. And that's yeah. what so when I was teaching at the college, 
I eventually just wrote off a couple of knives for myself while I was mm. teaching. Right. And I grabbed a 210 Moogie, a 135 mil Moogie, and that's what I brought to school. Mm -hmm. And I let the students use it. I never had to worry about them. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Jordan um, here. I just go want ahead. to say real quick, because we just got a bunch of new folks that have tuned in the last little bit. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. Uh, next week in All Night Force stores, March 21st to 27th, we are sharpening for Ukraine. 100% uh, of the money that you spend on knife sharpening next week will go to World Central Kitchen. Uh, they are providing relief all along the border as well as supporting restaurants within Ukraine uh, to help uh, feed refugees and that sort of thing. Um, and knife, the Knife War Foundation will match the total donation amount uh, and donate that to the Canadian Red Cross. And last time we did a charity sharpening drive, I think we raised over $16,000. So we're hoping to do even better this time. So bring your knives down to Knifeware and we'll, uh, we'll sharpen them up for you. Back to you, Lordy. Back to me as I float through. Sorry, I decided I'm looking up the answer to a question up ahead. Oh, sure. But, Do you want me to read out the next one? Yeah, hit up the next one there for me. From Jordan or Corey here? Go with Jordan. Go with Jordan because I'm yeah, looking up or I'm double checking my okay. answer. For Corey. Have any of you fellow nerds tried using a T12 metal file as a base plate uh, instead of gouging an Atoma or ceramic stone when grinding a chip tip or fully broken blade? Oh, uh, not me. <laughs> I, I tend to just use the gear we have lying around. Um, one thing that's uh, really handy that you can do with uh, fixing the tip, and it Francis actually teaches this in our uh, How to Fix a Knife Tip video on our YouTube channel, um, is he uses the side of a stone. He has a 220, and he uses the side of that to fix a chip tip. Um, I, it depends on how bad the tip is, you know. Uh, it is a bit of a slower process that way, but that, that's one way to go about it. Um, as far as using like files, you know, people use files to sharpen axes all the time. The main thing you want to be concerned with is the same as when you're using any other piece of equipment. It's don't, you know, make sure you're not building up heat, which I can't imagine you're going to do with a file and, uh, and just make sure you're taking your time and going slow and, uh, and not removing metal where you wouldn't want to remove metal, you know, that you're keeping the knife profile nice and straight and all that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Oh, you bugger. You're moving things around on me. We're both doing the same thing. Um, so Corey has heard that Kato forges the R2 Kotetsu, which would make sense since Ikeda mainly forges carbon steel from what I've seen. Is this yeah. true? I double – well, I looked. But as far as for the longest time, mm -hmm. it was our understanding that Ikeda, in fact, worked the Kotetsus. Um Kato in the last couple of years has started dabbling with R2 a little bit more, R2, yeah. SB2. Um, yeah. Someone is yeah, making those like black Damascus knives and stuff. Yeah. So um, as far as I know, it's Iketa. Um, Iketa mm -hmm. had been working on that with kind of almost namelessly for a long time while um, still kind of working under his uncle's like making right. knives under like the Andrew brand before he uh, took it over last year. Kind yeah. Of. The, the Kotetsus were kind of his thing before that. Yeah. So, right. Same with Tinker, right? Yeah. Yeah. So yep. yeah, Ikeda is the blacksmith behind the Tinker knives too. Yeah. So that's, I don't know. I think that's pretty exciting. Ikeda, he makes really good knives. So yeah. Um, Jonathan, see, this is what happens. If we start talking about our shit, then we fall behind. That's okay. Oh, this is more this is more interesting anyways. This I'm is sure more fun for me too, yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm looking for a knife with a very prominent Damascus pattern like the Yoshikane SLD Guto that I have. Just wanted mm. to know if you guys know of any other ones like them. I don't know what a Damascus Yoshikane looks like. I look it well, up. I looked it up and yeah. surprise, surprise, can you guess what it looks a little bit like? I got a guess. Okay, yeah. so it looks just like a Masashi Kuroshu. Um, I have one. I don't have it here though. It's a two. I have a two forty Guto. So the reason why we said guess what is because Masashi is the is the younger brother of the fella who owns Yoshikane, but he's yeah. takes more of an ar ar artistic approach. Oh, yeah. Say, much more hands on. He's only recently hired some staff. Um, yeah, he's you know, he's gonna take a vacation soon too. 
hasn't wow. had one of those in I think a couple of years. <laughs> He's yeah. a hardworking guy. Yeah. So um, they're not cheap. I'll tell you that right now. Mm-hmm. But it's pretty amazing. I wish well, I had. Some... One here. I don't even think we He's... have one there. I, I just downloaded a photo off our site. Uh, he's he's got a he's got some good reasons why his knives cost what they do too. You know, uh, it really comes down to the work that he does. So Masashi San Naoto has been t- telling me about this, and if you actually we have an interview with Masashi San on the channel from last summer. This is the Kuroshu knife. It's uh, it's pretty gorgeous. Yeah. Um, he, he his I think father or grandfather uh, learned to be a blacksmith around the Second World War. Um, when steel was was a pretty hot commodity and he wasn't allowed to use a lot of it. And so they developed techniques of forging where you do a lot less grinding, you waste a lot less steel. You, you basically forge the knife almost down to the finished shape as much as possible, yeah. including like any subtle indentations in the, in the face of the blade, the bevel. And so it reduces the work of the sharpener and, and just means he's spending more time in the forge. And, uh, and yeah. it's pretty incredible. He also, he's a very good sharpener. So he sharpens often, he purpose sharpens each knife. So each shape is a little different. And, yeah. but for all his gutos, often the heel will be a little thicker and the tip will be a little thinner for, for precision. So he's got, yeah. yeah, he puts a lot of work and a lot of just like intelligence. Into, yeah. I own two of his knives. I own a 180 guto and I own a 240 guto and they're incredible. They're both yeah. incredible. So, yeah. uh, Sergioto had asked about Kobayashi because he's trying to find who the actual blacksmith is. Yeah, you know what? Naoto's the guy for that one. And, and he's you know everyone, what? He's everyone's phone number, right? Some some blacksmiths don't want to be known. There are, are a good number of blacksmiths out there, and you'll see it sometimes. Often, if we don't mention the blacksmith, um, sometimes because it's an apprentice and they don't have their own like kind of brand yet. Uh, yeah. But often it's because they just don't want anybody to know their name. They, you know, they love being a blacksmith and forging knives, but they don't want fame. They don't want a brand. They just want to go into work and make knives and go home. And yeah. uh, and that's that's their passion. That's fair too. Totally, yeah. Yeah. Um, but bum, Greg. Easy question from Greg Olson. Mm. Do we sharpen the bulk made German knives? Of course we do. I love sharpening yeah. those things. It's fast and easy. Yeah, and we don't judge. We. I have German knives in my kitchen, right? Yep, me too. Yeah, so me we're not too. we're not elitist about it. Uh, and if you bring your knives in next week, all your money will go to charity. Yeah. yeah. Um, John here, I think he is making this recommendation for mm. Jonathan's question. You know, yeah. this knife is going to be a bit thinner. The Black Damascus, they're quite thin, you know. So if you're worried about chipping. Yep. And you've been grown very used to that Yoshikane. Uh, you're dealing with a thinner blade with the yep. Kato, but they're gorgeous. And this he, is when we'll get some. Yeah. This is when we'll ha- probably have some of those knives. Oh, oh, okay. You do it. Yeah, go ahead. There we go. You know, I got to do my job, right? That's uh, true. In, in May, uh, our, our twice annual garage sales, when we get a lot of this more stuff we don't normally carry, you know, stuff yeah. that's maybe not made in large enough quantities for us to sell it all the yeah. time. Um, but we'll, we'll probably get a bunch of those black Damascus knives then. All right, back to yours. Okay. Keyed frame. What are your thoughts on knives for small hands? My wife's hands is like the size of a 12 year old. Well, I will, t- you know, what kind of messed up keyed frame is I've got a 12 year old at home who's the same size as me and it's messing with my brain. Yeah. That's uh, weird. Yeah. Yeah. He's man sized, but not man thinking. You know, right. It's hard. Um, But thoughts for knives with small hands depends on what they want to do. Right. I often tell the story of buying a knife for my mom with this. My mother really likes to cook and she's really good at it, but doesn't like larger knives. I've bought her Santokus in the past and they never worked Mm -hmm. for her. She's I think she's afraid of the length. Right. What you want to look for is um, the word, if you were talking Japanese, ko, K-O, a ko-guto, a ko-santoku, a ko-bunka, any of those is like a mini chef's knife, all right? Um, Right off the top of my head, a masashi ko-bunka is going to do real well for you. Um, So is shun 
makes 150 mil Santoku and sec and chef's knife. So does Miyabi. Yeah. Um, if you're looking for that more all purpose kind of do everything shape, um, those are good lines to look in. Yeah. The Miyabi mm. Birchwood 160 mil Guto. Oh yeah. Yeah. Knife. Totally. Um, you can get a Masashi Kuroshu or Shiroshu Bunka. Yeah. Uh, those are regularly made. The Masakage Kobunkas depends really on how small her hands are. They don't give mm -hmm. you as much height. They're more yeah. like a they're more like a petty knife that kind of has a cool tip to them. Right? So a bunka. This is a terrible drawing. <laughs> Keep your opinions to yourself. But a bunka usually has that kind of tip. Yeah. Right? So that's you what but a co it just depends on who you're looking at. But yeah, yeah. a Masachi Kobunka would be a sweet one. If you just yeah. want something super cheap and cheerful as well, Tojiro makes a child Santoku. Yeah. Now, if you take it out of the packaging that makes it clearly for children, it's less insulting. But we have one at home for my kids because I have a seven year old and an 11 year old. Um, mm -hmm. Great knife. I, I, if it's what's closest, I'll grab it depending on what yeah. I'm doing. Oh, know? they're great little knives. Um, yeah. I, my spouse has quite small hands and just uses like a, a Japanese handled Santoku that's like lightweight, kind of thinner blade and, and really likes that too. So even just, you know, if, if if she doesn't want like a tiny knife, something that's just a little lighter and doesn't have that big, heavy riveted handle might be appealing yeah. too. Yeah. Um, let's go back. DJ was just, you know, confirm the Fujiwara question, just trying to find some, just, yeah, trying to cite sources. That's... That's a yeah, okay. It's a good thing to do on the internet. There's a lot of people that don't cite yeah, sources, so well done. <laughs> uh, Ernest has a good question. I like this. I often hear that people mention heat treat from the blacksmith is great, etc. But how can we actually tell if the heat treat is good? Let's say we're holding those knives in mm. hand. I immediately thought of edge retention is going to be your best bet for determining the heat treat. Right? right. Like if you're using the knife and someone tells you that this is a really great knife. Now that means you probably still have to do a little bit of maintenance. You don't get your honing rod out, get your strop out, but mm -hmm. it shouldn't go like ridiculously dull quickly. Yeah. Right. You can also tell like when you're sharpening a knife, how quickly does the, uh, does the burr form? Sometimes it just goes faster than you think it should. Yeah. And that can be an indication that it hasn't the heat treat wasn't done properly sure. um there's no sadly there's no way that i can tell you just by looking at it um, yeah you know it's more of a consensus thing it. like you know we, we get a lot of these knives coming back and if you know over the years we'll definitely notice if certain knives are coming back more often yeah. chipped or dull really quickly or that sort of yeah. thing yeah there was one instance where i was able to tell that a heat treat wasn't that good because someone had, it was like a, an algami super or something. And it like went from dull to a burr, like pulled up a burr, like way too fast. Right. And it was yeah. just kind of like, mm, that was too easy. Didn't like it, you know? Sure. Yeah. But, and I mean, these generally the blacksmiths will make, make a handful of knives and send them away for testing and then yeah. just kind of follow the same procedure. And some of them are more traditional where they do it by sight. Some of them I would yeah. imagine are more you know, em empirical about it, but if you're ever yeah, watching, um, if you're ever watching like, uh, what the hell's that show called? Forged in fire. I'm guessing you're going to say in fire. Yeah. yeah. You'll see them oft often reaching for the, uh, uh, for a file. And what they'll do yeah. is they're seeing if the file will bite into the steel. Like after it comes out, they quench it. They'll see if the steel, if the file will bite into the steel. Because if it, if it's harder than the steel, sorry, if they did a good job, the knife is going to be harder than the file, and the file will just glance over it. Mm -hmm. But if they did a bad job and the and the knife is softer than the file, the file yeah. will bite in. So, there's, yeah. yeah, there's no real like, you know, there's no real like, hmm, this knife was heat treated well sometimes you yeah. can look like 
you know, maybe you're you're wondering about like hem and lines and things like that, but that's not something that you often find in um, kind of more like those knives are real expensive. Yeah, like a honyaki knife or or like a Japanese styled honyaki knife. Like yeah, that's not something that just turns up in any old knife. So yeah, my buddy know. Chris Hopefully Green. Uh, my buddy Chris Green makes like camp knives, like yeah, much knives that are much more robust than Japanese knives. And so he usually uh, just tests the knife by going to town on a two by four. And he has had knives like just crack apart on him mm. <laughs> and, uh, and break. Uh, what have we got here? E30 Birdie. Nathan, and I will do the prep with my knives instead. She's scared of them and she knows how important they are. Well, there we go. Totally fair. Um, bum, bum. I'm actually, what's John up to? Let's read John's thing here. John is getting back into school, transition out of the restaurant industry after 20 years. Mm. Understandable. I did it for 15 yep. and ended up here. I was I talking made it to eight. my academic advisor about working for World Central Kitchen after graduation. That's cool. Cool. That's that sounds cool. awesome. Jordan says the video where you fix a Guto into a K-tip made me really want to mail you guys a file. <laughs> yeah. I would uh, I would presume that we're showing off a bit. I don't really remember. Yeah, that I don't remember. Sadly to say. Um, you have to re jog my memory, Jordan. Yeah, I would use a belt sander yeah. myself. If I and, was and I think all our shops have belt sanders nowadays, too. And we're just very yeah. careful with heating up the steel. I mean, that's obviously a more expensive piece of equipment than a file, but it works very well. Yeah. Yeah, John is just saying that it would be an honor to work with uh, Chef Andreas. Yeah. Uh, DJ got to one of my questions. Oh, DJ got what's this? This Vun Rent. You put one of those up. Oh, what is that? Oh, oh yeah, that was an accident. Uh, that's uh, apparently. Well, you looked this up last time. I thought it was like Russian spies communicating in code in our chat, but apparently it's just like some scam bot sending links. Uh, well, don't click Hot on that. Singles in your area or something. Oh wow! Like really? Yeah. Uh, um, DJ, any Shigafusas or Hinoras coming for the garage sale? I'm, I don't know. Probably not. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, do you, this is a question we get quite a bit. Do you want to, should we wait to answer this one? No. Oh, well, yeah. yeah let, let's wait. I, I'm looking at your list. Let's, let's hold off on the answer. For okay. Now. We're going to hold off. Um, ba -ba -bum, D Lazenby. Just back to the UK from Ottawa. Do we ship? We sure do. Yeah. We sure do. We ship anywhere where the, where, I don't know. There's Anywhere the angel goes. We don't. Yeah. The thing to keep in mind is that, and I'll just, you know what? I'm going to just, I'm going to be very simple about it. We've got no control over duties imposed by the country you live in. No. So keep that in mind when you're placing an order. Is that sometimes, now, the nice thing about us using DHL is that DHL will give you, will tell you what to expect ahead of time. Yeah. But. But yeah, mo most countries you will get charged some kind of duties yeah. uh, with but the exception not, of the United States. Yeah. But it's not up to us. I'm sorry about that. But I'm just saving you typing an email. Yeah. Um, John is correct when they said Ogata makes an SG2 Santoku in the 150 mil range. Yeah. And he makes like some crazy tall knives too. I like them. Yeah. Uh, Michael says his favorite knives are cheap Shibazi Chinese cleaner cleaver made in China, a Shigeki Tanaka 240 Guto Ginsan, great workhorse knife, and a Shiro Camo R2 Black Damascus Guto is a laser. Yeah, they are super thin. I'm less familiar with the other two knives that you've mentioned, but very familiar with the uh, with Camo Sen. Yeah. Um, Ernest says, thanks for the answer. Paul for lot says, did someone say Hinora? I know Nathan, if I had to, like if I was in some sort of Liam Neeson taken yeah. situation and someone said, get me three Hinoras, <laughs> I know where to go yeah. or at least whom I might send a message to. Yeah. Please, I need them to save 
my dog. You know? Yeah. Look at that. And I made it. I made it to the end. All right. No one ever thought I'd do it. You guys want to know what the second most common? (laughs) 45 minutes in, we're finally at the second question. Yeah. Hey, at least we got to it. Yeah. Okay. Number nine, 200 bucks for a knife. A lot of people get a bit of sticker shock, right? Because unless you come up in kitchens or you like grew up in a house that just kind of liked having nicer things around, $200, Two hundred dollars, yeah. even a hundred bucks, can seem like a lot of money for a knife. Yeah, but the thing well, that... I can get a whole block of eighteen knives at Canadian Tire for like one hundred fifty bucks. Yeah, the thing to keep in mind, right? It's like anything, okay? It's like art. It's like your car. It's your refrigerator. It's whatever. All right, it is who made it? What's it made out of? And how long did it take? Yeah. Those are the three things that contribute to the price, right? Yeah. Obviously, like, so let's look at Fujiwara, right? Fujiwara's knives, each one, well, the Mabaroshis and the Denkas is what I'm focusing on. Um, yeah. Incredible uh, materials. Takes a long time because I do the forge welding, right? And Fujiwara has, a re- has an immensely great reputation. Yeah. Right. It's like anything. Yeah. But when you're talking about like a $200 knife, we're starting to get into that. Like we're definitely on to, um, we're using awesome materials Yeah. and we're getting into, um, we're, we're getting into a lot of knives that are, are handmade at yeah. that point. Right. Well, I, I, would argue, I would argue. I would argue mo- most or all of them are handmade at that point. Some of them they're not yeah. all hand forged, but even the yeah. ones that are forged by a machine still have a lot of work done by hand. Yeah, even a Tojiro, man. Yeah, hundred and ten oh, yeah. bucks will get you a Santoku. That yeah, it started from a stamped piece of steel, but that knife got ground by hand, polished by hand, sharpened by hand. The handle is put on by hand, and the finishing, finishing shaping is done by hand. Very little in our store is not like does not have someone's mitts all over it. Yeah. So, um, where did we get there with that? Do 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 do. Let's. I'm looking to see if we got any more. Oh, Ernest Mac. Ernest Mac just asked the next question, or kind of, mm. kind of. Right. He asked where I'm going to get with this. How do I sharpen this thing? Right. Talking to a customer. Right. We're looking at knives. And it's usually like we've probably gone from having like 10 knives out down to five knives. And that's when they start to think like, how am I going to take care of this thing? Right. So day to day sharpening. If I was prepared for this conversation, I would have a honing rod here. Now, Ernest asked, is it true that a Japanese knife shouldn't touch a honing rod? I'm going to go to the other side of the room. I'll see what I need. Yeah, it really depends on what kind of honing rod you're talking about. Because we we have said both. We've said that they should never touch a honing rod. Uh, and we also said they should always touch a honing rod. Um, but it, it depends on what kind of honing rod you're talking about, right, Lordy? Yeah, it does for sure. So a generic, like what we would call a steel is often a bad choice for a Japanese knife. And the reason being, it kind of goes back to question number one or 10, whatever I said there, the first question we talked about, where we talked about steel hardness, is we want to make sure that when our knife is coming into contact with that steel, that our knife is a harder, or that the steel is a harder material than our knife. Otherwise, they don't work properly and they can cause a bit of damage. So that's why we sell ceramic honing rods. And we sell these guys for half off when you pick up a new knife. That's in store or on the website, whatever works for you, right? The idea is that the ceramic honing rod doesn't allow the knife to bite into it. And then it doesn't kind of cause any troublesome damage down yeah, the road. The, the texture's not really rough. It's not as a, yeah. abrasive as a, a diamond rod, which can remove metal. Yeah, yeah, I try to avoid those diamond. Uh, yeah, even on even on cheaper knives, to be honest, I don't like them because 
they are designed to remove a lot of steel and it takes the control away from me. Yeah, they're like craft for your knives. It works great, and then you just need to use it more and more and more, and your knife just gets worn down and down and down. DJ, DJ's got all the hard questions today. You see? This? Yeah. This guy's like coming right for me. <laughs> Holy moly. Well, I'm going to answer. I got to guess. Now, I can't speak with any true authority on this. Yeah. Um, these are some good Nauto questions. This is these are good questions for Nauto, but I have a guess. I kind of when I'm in these situations, I I try to go with like WWKKDU D, WWKKD. What would Kevin Gent do? Mm -hmm. Right now, I've met Fujiwara. Fujiwara isn't a, the kind of person where you would just casually ask him for a favor. Mm -hmm. He's a pretty tough customer, that guy. So I think you'll see. Um, I think we like to just highlight him for who he is. You know, we have had we have had some knives that no one else got before from Fujiwara. But yeah. it doesn't benefit anybody to call it a knifeware knife, right? It's Fujiwara. Yeah. Fujiwara is the guy who put the work in. He's the guy who's, you know, his family's been at it for... God knows how long, four generations or something like that. No real benefit calling it a knife or a knife, I don't think. Well, and, and I mean, to maybe further how Kevin might respond, uh, you know, he's a bit of a bit of a Tom Waits or a, a Neil Young in the knife making world. He's not, uh, I think he's just, he makes knives for himself that he also yeah. sells, you know? Yeah. He makes knives that he really likes selling. And we kind of, kind of like how we always use his name, his full name, you know, we don't, we don't, abbreviated he's we, not, call we don't call him ever we don't ever call him tf yeah because some he's like to do he's that. somebody that commands some serious respect and and you know we're, we really like the knives that he makes and so we're, we're pretty happy with those um i, well, I would, like I, I would love to see some of the collaborations he's done with people i bet they look really cool um yeah but yeah we're pretty happy with the knives we get from him for sure for sure i got to spend a couple of days with him in japan once and i'm i'm not a small guy Mm. Um, I'm definitely a hell of a lot bigger than Fujiwara-san is, <laughs> but I was afraid of him. Yeah, he's got a presence. The whole time we were there, yeah. I got to meet uh, him when he came to Calgary, and he's he's a cool dude. But he's definitely like you know you. Yeah, just be happy he likes you. Yeah, like, that's kind of the impression I got. It was like, oh, this could be bad if he didn't like me. So I was I ended up in charge of ordering dinner when he was in town, and I uh, I fed him too much meat. I was going to say, how do you screw that up? He was very happy with dinner, but I, f I forgot to order m really any vegetables. And he, he was sad like that you. there were no vegetables. Oh, uh, Kasumi would have been mad too. Yeah. Or Kasumi would have been happy. Yeah, well, she Kasumi would have been mad happy. if you ordered veggies. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Um, there's an interesting, I'm going to skip ahead of Corey for a second because Michael said the best honing rod I've used is a sintered Reuben. It's a, it's a ruby. I've oh, I've heard about before. this. So I got to use one. I got a, I've a, uh, a friend here in Ottawa named Gary. Mm. Gary has one. He's super into sharpening. Um, and yeah, he bought one. Uh, incredible. And yeah, they really, but they're not cheap. No, the nice thing about the though. ceramic, the nice thing about ceramic is that like they're 64 bucks. Yeah. Right. The, I remember the, the sintered ruby one that he had. And this was like two years ago. I think he spent about 150 bucks on it. Okay, that's. I mean, that's less you know, than so thank you. It's not crazy. Yeah, but there is like a uh, ruby honing rod. Just sounds like a Minecraft item. It sounds like something that you would have. Yeah. So I want one. Um, yeah, you could put it beside all your rose gold cocktail gear. Right. You got like a dragon's horde when it comes <laughs> to eating and drinking. Um, Corey and teeth apparently too. It says I know. Yeah, that's true. Often less more talk of Fujiwara and Mizaki as blacksmiths that forge weld, but you guys also have some other smiths that do that from southern Japan, like Kajiwara and Munatoshi and Shindo. Mm. Yeah, so that's true. Um, yep. But the, we just don't, um, we haven't been dealing with these people quite so much mm. yet. You know, so we'll get there. Yeah, we'll yeah we're always there. looking to branch out. The, the Moritakas, I think we were their first customer outside of Japan ever. Yeah. And, uh, and they're just, you know, we just love them and their story that I think we, we focus on them a lot because 
we just kind of have a love affair with their knives and their story. Same with Fujiwara, right? Like they're one of the early, he was one of the earlier makers that we brought in and uh, that was really exciting to us. And so it just kind of has always been a focus, but uh, yeah, I hope to see, I mean, as I've said before, we get a lot of these other knives in the gr knife or garage sale and as demand for Japanese knives grows, we'll continue to need to talk to other makers. Um, we also have our small makers month every summer where we kind of highlight some of these folks. And so hopefully we'll get to talk about them a bit more soon. Cause I, I love learning about new, new makers or makers that I haven't heard about. Yeah. Um, I just want owl woodworks earlier mm. says, uh, imagine calling Terry Yasu Fujiwara Terry. Oh, not to his you, face. If you did that to his face, you might you might get to learn how to like cut off a piece of your own finger <laughs> in front of an audience. I remember the story uh, about what, what I can't remember if it was Toru, but Ke, or maybe it was Naoto. Kevin Kevin took somebody to Japan for their first time. And, I think and it might have been me, actually. Was it you? Well, it and Fujiwara, been. they they went to make me Fujiwara. And he walked them into his office, and there just there was a golf bag in the corner of the office. No, this wasn't my story. No. Okay, and there was there was a mixture of golf clubs and katanas. And yeah. He walks over to the golf bag, and as they're following him, he just grabs the handle of one of the swords and just like, like like an in anime, he just like whips it out and settles over here with the tip of the sword like this far from the the poor guy's nose. Hmm. As a joke, I watched you know, him just like pulling around. Yeah, I watched him beak a car. Like we were crossing the street to go into a liquor store, and because uh, we had like sake with dinner, he took us out for sushi the night before, and it was incredible. And Kevin and I both really enjoyed the sake that we had with dinner. It had this like kind of green peppercorn flavor to it, and we had mentioned really liking it. And he's like, "Oh well, I know where we can buy it. Let's go get it." And we went the next morning. And we were crossing the street and uh, he was crossing and there was a car coming. And I was like, oh, Fuji, just be careful, Fujiwara son, you know, and because uh, this person didn't look like they were stopping. Right. And he just walked out in the middle of the street, stopped in his tracks, stared at the car. I think Peter mentioned this in the comments, stared at the car and wouldn't move. The car had to turn around and, <laughs> and go. He just wouldn't move. Yeah, it was nuts. Yeah. So, yeah, I wouldn't mess with them. Wolfpack Outdoors has a has a knife question though. Mm. Can you guys awesome. recommend a first Guto? I really wanted carbon, but everything is so hard to find. I'm open to stainless. Trying to stay under two fifty mm. and want a balanced knife between laser and workhorse. Mm. Well, we talked about the Kokuto, the Ginsan. That would nah, it's not really. Is it laser enough? The Fujimoto SLD, that's close. I'm going to presume 250 American. That's what I'm yeah, because I was going to say if it's 250 American, we just we just got a shipment of Moritaka Ishimes to the yeah. warehouse last week, and they're on their way to shops right now. But the the Moritaka Ishime 210 or 240 Guto is a pretty sweet knife, mm. and it's full carbon. Full carbon, yeah. It's going to be. It's going to lean a little closer to workhorse than laser mm. in the beginning. You know, it's got a very short bevel. So I, I find that tends to, but that's what I used. My first knife was a 240. Uh, well, my first knife from Knifeware was a 240. Um, oh my God. It was a 240 Moritaka Ishime Kiritsuke. That yep. was my first knife. Yeah. And I kicked the crap out of it. We've got the, I'm just looking online. We've got the Haruki Shiso in stock right now, which is a pretty sweet mm. knife. I really like that yeah, one. Yeah, that's Algami Super. Yeah. That's going to be a little closer to Laser Beam. Yeah. yeah. Even the Masakage Yuki is relatively thin. Yeah. That's in um, stock, um, shockingly. Yeah. Um, a Mizu, if we had a Mizu. Yeah. That would be, that's pretty budget oriented, those Ooh, guys. You know, I really like the Fujimoto Kurochi Forge. Like I, that oh, 240, yeah. I don't know if we have the 240 in stock. We have the 210 for sure. That is quite a cheap and cheerful knife, and it's it's a it's a it's a full carbon. Yeah, the 240 is like 226 Canadian, so that leaves some room for a, a honing rod. Oh, hey, you can get some toys. 
can get some toys with that. Yeah. Um, bum, 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 bum. Ah, Michael. Well, I'm going to get to that one in a second. Yeah, Corey says it seems to be a lot of Smiths from Tosa and Kumamoto still forge weld, albeit they're pretty rustic with Kurochi finishes. True. Uh, Nishida and Munaishi also come to mind. I know Shindo forges Warakomi as well. So Warakomi, just for like a little bit of a glossary step, Warakomi is not when you take three layers of steel. That's called Sanmai. Warakomi is where you take mm -hmm. one piece of steel and split it open and put the hard steel in the middle like a hot dog. So that's what the Moritakas do. Cool. In case anyone cared. That was my opportunity to show that I am a nerd too. I'll be uh, honest, I have the worst memory in the world and I completely forgot what it meant. Yeah. yeah. Well, here, I'm going to become nerdier when MRK says if Fujiwara-san was a D&D &D character, what class would he be? Yeah. Mm. Fujiwara. Okay. We're going to presume modern edition. Okay. okay. Fifth edition. That's what, you know, I don't want to fall into this like 3.5 bullshit. <laughs> uh, Something has got to be one of the more eccentric classes. Yeah. But, but very. You know what? I think he'd be like a type of rogue. With like okay, because he's a bit of a he is a bit of a trickster, yeah. He's a bit of a trickster, and I think yeah, he's a rogue, and I think he's gonna be like, like the rogue, like the mastermind rogue, mm. like the one who like is kind of designed around like knowing how and how hard to hit you. That's my vote. Fujiwara Ooh. is a rogue. Okay. Yeah, or I think maybe what might have been expected uh, is like. One of those, uh, an artificer, I think, because like they like right. make stuff, but they like yeah, make yeah. like little robots and stuff. Yeah, right? I don't think. Yeah, I put. I'm gonna put Fujiwara as a rogue. I like yeah. that. I don't think I have a better answer than that. Most of yeah. my classes yeah. that I remember are, are old ones. So I, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, let's go back to a steel question, and then we'll hop back on some of mine. Maybe All we right. can get through mine before dinner starts. Uh, what about super steels like ZDP 189, 40? How do they compare to Algami Super or SG2 R2 when it comes to performance? Is the extra sharpening effort worth it? Well, speaking from experience, because I, I own a knife made out of HAP 40. Um, and you're right. There is extra sharpening effort involved. The nice thing, in my experience, I don't I don't find that I can... I, get it a lot sharper than my Algami Super or my SG2s, but it stays that way for a lot longer. Yeah. Yeah, I have a I have a Hap 40 Mugen that just like I've had it for since we started getting the Mugens, like seven, yeah. eight years. Eight years ago. What a 240 or something? Yeah, uh, two ten. One. Two and, ten. and I've sharpened it maybe twice. And like I don't use it every day, but I, I use it a fair yeah. bit. Uh, yeah, and it, I've sharpened it twice, I think, in eight yeah. years. Yeah, I have a 150 Petty that's been sharpened. You know what? It's been tuned up a couple of times, like, you know, honing rod strops, that kind of thing. Maybe polish it 4,000, 8,000 kind of thing. But it's only had one actual, like, sharpening. Right. You know, and I made poor Sean do it. I said, hey, Sean. Here's my here's my Mugen. I want it thinned out. <laughs> so the, the, the beauty of being a manager. It's, yeah. It's training. Yeah, it's training. Here's a knife that's going to take you all day, even if you do it right. Um, let's get... Oh, here we go. Michael. Oh, I'll get to DJ in a second. Mike, Because okay. Michael's got... the Both of these two have great questions today. Oh, yeah. Not to downplay anyone else's questions, but these guys are like, it's like they like got my notes or something ahead of time. <laughs> um, Michael, like has Chocera stones, are they good enough for such hard steels? I prefer Chocera stones for really hard steels. Yeah. That's, That's kind true. of what they're made for. Um, 
Uh, and Naoto can talk to this better than me. He understands the differences and the different types of ceramic and so on and so forth. I don't. There's, I use these ones for really hard steels and I use these ones for softer steels. Yeah. So uh, the Choceras would be my choice for those really hard steels. Um, and that's what I tell people. Like if you're sharpening like kind of, you know, blue carbon and up, it's worth considering getting Chosera stones yeah. because they're a little better equipped for the hard, hard steels. Given the choice, so. I would probably just use exclusively Chosera stones, except maybe for straight razors. Mm. If they're like, you can yeah. spend as much money on your own sharpening gear as you want, I'd probably just pick all Chosera. Yeah. Um, DJ says, I've heard that diamond stones are the best for powdered steels. Nanny want diamond stones. That is, I've never really used a diamond stone that was higher grit than 220. I just, uh, I don't know. Yeah. I don't see the point. Yeah, well, I think get... bang for buck, like the Naniwa stuff, is what, what's right for me. Totally. Or like yeah. the Nani, like the Choceros, yeah. Yeah. Um, but DJ was asking about woodworking t and tools and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, woodworking Japanese tools like chisels and planes are very similar to knives and awesome. Are you planning to sell some from time to time? Um, we have had them in garage sales. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> we've had them in garage sales in the past. We had some chisel sets a few years ago. Um, you know, if you were looking for something in particular, there's no harm in reaching out and asking yeah. if we can get it. Um, but yeah, garage sale is the place to kind of, unless if we're not otherwise prompted, garage yeah. sale is the move for sure. Yeah. We, we tend not to add stuff to our full full permanent selection that we don't know enough about to be able to talk about like you know yeah. like we we pretty pretty much everybody that works for knife for yeah. cooks to some extent um very yeah. few of us are into woodwork and really know much about it um and very few of us have the skills to sharpen that kind of stuff we also really like to you know mostly sell things that we can sharpen and repair ourselves yeah. um so i'd love to see that one day and then ernest has a question that I'm going to get to. All right. Where did I make it? Okay. Right. How do I sharpen this thing? Can I use an electric sharpener? Don't, unless you don't like the thing you're sharpening. Yeah. How often does it need sharpening? Well, that often depends on how much you use it, what it's made out of. Yeah. I find most, I find most of our customers in the stores anyways, are on like, in every eight to 12 months kind of cycle. Like come in, like depends on the knife, you know, like I find like maybe to like Tojiro DPs, Moogies, they're like on a six to eight month cycle. Mm -hmm. And that's just kind of, cause what that does is like, that keeps it tip top. Yeah. You know, like there's no, we're not really lapsing in performance yeah. within that realm. Um, most customers I say are every eight to 12 months. Yeah. But it depends on how much you use it, right? Yeah. If you're a chef, you can throw those numbers out the window. <laughs> like when I was cooking professionally, I sharp my knives every week. Yeah. That's what I did on Sundays. And your standard of sharpness too. Like if you're yeah. if you're a real nerd about sharpening or about, about sharpness, but you maybe don't sharpen your own knives, yeah, you're going to be in more often than my mom who I haven't sharpened her knife for four years and she's still happy with the edge it has. Yeah, I need to go sharpen my mom's knives. Last time I used them, they were no bueno. Yeah. I don't think she's used the honing rod though either. So it's pretty, no. still pretty shiny, the honing rod. Yeah. Um, here's one people are often curious about. What's the difference between the handles? Oh, is that Japanese handle? That can't be very good. It's just a piece of wood, right? Mm, yeah. The biggest difference between handles is going to, like when you play, I don't have an, I often, I get, I get mouthy about the teeter-totter game. Right. Right. People are asking about balance points and this kind of thing. And I get kind of mouthy about it because I think what Nathan is doing is useless information. Right. What you want to do, hold on to the knife. And if it feels good when you use it, the balance is good. Right. Totally. Harder to do when you're shopping online. You might have a better idea of where you like to hold a knife. But if you hold a knife in a pinch grip and it feels good then you're going to be okay. If it's blade like more forward heavy is a term that some people throw around. Um, you'll find that it 
works really well on that kind of push and pull chopping. If it's yeah. heavier, if it's more handle heavy, you maybe I don't know. It might feel better when you pull when you're chopping. I don't know. I don't really put that amount of like I don't think about that part that hard. For me, yeah. it's, it feels good in my hand. I like it. I, nice I like to joke it. that I'm lazy, so I like knives that are heavier in the front because they do more of the work for well, me. Just, but it's, it's, it's like, true. When you go on when you go on a tobogganing hill, you just want a little push forward, and then you yeah. get to go down the hill. Yeah. Right. Here, I'm, um, I got to step away for thirty seconds while you answer this next one. Okay. So, and then the other thing, uh, Japanese handles versus Western handles, right? If you look over here, this knife. That's a Japanese handle, often called a wah handle. And then the ones around it are a more Western style handle. So don't let that old adage of, uh, you know, three rivets and a full tang sway you too hard. Really comes down to personal preference. Sorry, I had a hiccup there while I was doing that. What else we got? What else we got here? Okay. You know what? Ernest is saying, what's the most inquired knife? for knifeware, something like Takeda that are always sold out. Takeda has been sold out for a little while. Um, Takeda-san has had a bad run of luck. He uh, His workshop suffered some from some floods, and then this whole pandemic thing happened. So he's kind of, uh, he's he's in a bad, he's not in a great spot. He'll he'll come back from it, though. And then Kuhn says Takamura Hana's, nah, Takamura Uchigumo's. People uh, ask about those a little bit more. And then Paul says, life hack, buy more knives, and you'll have to sharpen them less frequently, probably. Well, I've worked here for about seven years, and I think I've only sharpened Paul's knives once. So he's on to something. And then John says, just joining now, so I'm not sure if this is answered before. Um, is it? Is it true I shouldn't mince with my Guto? And is it safe to use a Guto to cut meat? Scared of mm. hitting bones. Right. I do both of those things, right? I mince with my Guto, like that. Just be careful, right? You don't want to be forcing it into the cutting board. You don't want to be working too hard. Letting the you don't want to be like doing work. this one where you're like really getting in there, putting all your weight Yeah, you're not, like, you're not jacking up a car. <laughs> you know, you're just like, like, take your time. You should be fine. And yep. then, yeah, if the meat's not frozen, be I'd be more careful with frozen meat than, you know, if you're scared of hitting bones. The best thing you can do is take your time and work gently. If you, um, if you are taking your time and you come in contact with a bone, back off, kind of go in at a slightly different angle. Don't try to force your way through that's when you'll chip stuff. Right? Yeah. I we use my Yuko to portion steaks and carb yep. brisket sometimes and no yep. big deal. There, there's a, sorry, go ahead. You might be saying the same thing I was about to say. I was going to say, we did a video of, um, with Nathan, I did one where we were butchering chicken and such. Mm. And I yep. kind of show, a good, it'll come out eventually, but there's some good information on, um, yeah. um, how to get through a bone. If you have yeah. to, um, you we've know. got a video with with Mike uh, that came out. He kind of does like our knife skills videos because he 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 was a chef for a lot of years, um, and he's really good at explaining things. Uh, that came out maybe two months ago, but it's on the channel. Check it out, uh, and it's just called "How to Use a Guto," and it covers that. It covers how to mince safely so that you're not messing up your knife. And he also carves a roast with it and, and talks about that. So that'll nice. uh, probably help you a fair bit. Um. Michael saying off. Oh, I wonder if Kevin, if this is just Kevin, why is there a Swiss flag behind you? So the fella who owns Knifeware and who I normally do these videos with, his name is Kevin Kent. And there's a joke that he really likes about Switzerland. And it's... Is it a joke or is it is it just something he keeps repeating? I'm sure at one point it was funny. Like, I no. might have smiled the first time. No, it's just so Kevin tells this joke all the time. And so a very lovely man named the Voog purchased this flag for me. So out of politeness, I have it hung up where Kevin occasionally sees it. And then I am subjected to the joke again. <laughs> Normally so you just that walk is it with your head. 
during the whole show. Yeah. Yeah. So that is this Swiss flag is my cross to bear. <laughs> you know, it's what it's it's the main topic with you, therapist. Really. Yeah. DJ, how many knives are in your collections? Where's your sweet spot number wise? Mine's around ten. How many knives do you got, Nathan? Kitchen knives, probably about ten. Um, I once I started working at Ken of Englewood years ago, I kind of slowed down on the kitchen knife collecting, which is probably yeah. a good time for me to stop. Um, hunting knives, outdoor knives, other big big knives, small knives, uh, probably bumps that number up to twenty twenty five. Mm. The last time I counted, I had forty three Japanese yeah. kitchen knives. I'm not surprised. Yeah, I got and a few I'm, in, my but I'm, a, I'm including all kinds of stuff. Like I got Max in there. There's some Globals in there. Yeah, totally. You know? There's like this weird, like handmade oyster knife I have. Like Sweet. there's all well, kinds you, of. You're yeah. in the industry about twice as long as me, so you you had some more time to collect stuff before you started working at night. Yeah. Work. And then I started working at Knifeware, and that's when it went from like 20 to 40. So, Yeah. Um, Don't get a job at Knifeware if you're trying to buy fewer knives. Soft Terminator, up. any news on Masashi's new lines? So I got a little bit mm. of a sneak peek when we did Sharp Knives Rock last week. Um, Masashi is retiring two knife lines. He's retiring the Koi and the Kimuri. And he is replacing them with two that are yet to be named. Um, there is a Karochi, a, a polished up Karochi. I think the spine is all nicely polished. I think that one's supposed to be made out of SLD. And then I can't even remember what the other one looks like. Oh, thank God for Nathan. I was working on it. It took me a minute. Yeah. Yeah, these are the two of them. Yeah. I'm pretty sure this one's SLD and the other one is VS1. I might have it backwards, though. I can't really remember. So we're hoping to have them um, hopefully in time for a garage sale, I think is what Nauto was saying. Yeah, I think we should have them by May or by yeah. you know late May kind of thing. Yeah. Um, and I don't know what shapes we're getting, but probably similar to, to before. Yeah. But yeah, I'm very excited for I them. would hope so. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, here's some, you know what? We got a joke about the Swiss flag being a big plus. Yeah, I was I was avoiding saying that. Um, <laughs> Ernest says, I see some Japanese knife makers use Swedish stainless steel. What's that about? Right. Um you know what? Then I have one. I have a Konosuke knife, and it's made out of AEBL, which is a yep. Swedish stainless. And I think they like to use that in the event of what's called a like a mono steel knife. Yeah. You know, it doesn't have three layers. It doesn't have cladding. It's just kind of a heat treated piece of metal with um, uh, sharpened up and whatnot. I don't know why. Like, it's not that common. You know, it's really only the Konosuke that comes to mind right away. Uh, I think some of like the Ninox knives are made out of that, I, but I, I wouldn't quote me. I obviously mm. I know more about what we sell than what we don't. So, um, you know, what? it makes a good knife. I'm happy with the one I have. Yeah. But yeah, it's usually it's not a uh, it's not as hard of a steel because it doesn't yeah. have that cladding on it. Well, and at the end of the day, the Swedes make it. really great steel. Um, yeah. and blacksmiths like trying different stuff out and experimenting and, and, uh, each blacksmith has their own preference as to what they like to forge and work with. And so for some of them, it just happens to be Swedish steel. Uh, Iwasaki son who makes our Kamasori's uses, started using Swedish steel a while back and those mm. cause he really likes it. That's what I have. That's what I shaved with two Fridays ago. Nice. Yeah. I've used mine for a while. Yeah. Um, we skip ahead a little bit. Um, you know, DJ is arguing with Don Penny because Don Penny is of the N plus one mindset. Right. Um, you always need one more knife. Yeah. See, the thing I feel, though, DJ, is saying like, and you know what? Not wrong. Yeah. At one point, at one point the next one will make one from your collection redundant. Knives in the same price range are quite similar. 
True. Yeah. Um, but sometimes they make you feel better. Right. Totally. I am not the kind of person who's going to sit here. Like, I don't have a, like, I don't know. Maybe you are a knife spreadsheet kind of person, but I mm. definitely buy knives with my guts more than I do my brain. Well, I, 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 more Taka Guto compared to a, a Kurosaki Guto compared to a, a, a Masashi Guto. You've got three totally different knives. And while they're all technically yeah. the same shape and size, everything else about yeah. them is super different. Um, I yeah. have three 210s. Um, and there's a That's lot of other shapes I don't have yet. But yeah. they're, well, it's, one of them is different steel. They've all got pretty different handles. And so I kind of yeah. just switch back and forth between what, I feel like using yeah. that day for fun. I think if you're talking about redundancy, there's probably about 12 or 14 knife shapes you could get before you start running into redundancy, you know, including a couple of butchering knives and a, a big cleaver and maybe a Chinese cleaver and bread knife. But mm. yeah. I, yeah, I think the average home cook could probably get by with five really great knives for the rest of their life. But yeah, you know, just depends on what kind of a knife person you are. Cause there's always a, a yeah. maker that comes along. Like I thought I was good. And then we started getting those Hato Sakai knives in and the Nigara. And yeah. Now I've got a big list yeah. again. Me too. Me too. I want a knife from Manaka. Yeah. Yeah, me too. That's my, I try to sell them quickly so I don't have to look at them long. Manaka Bunka. It's on my list. Yeah. Um, Kuhn is asking if they're going to be priced similarly to the Koi and Kamuri. I would assume so. They look like they're more in line with a Koi and Kamuri than they are a Kuroshu and Shiroshu. It's yeah. Yes, though. Yeah. They, they're it kind of between the two. Like, they're going to be more than the Koi and Kamuri. Um, uh, Masashi's son was was uh, working working very hard to the point where he didn't have any time off. It was basically just working all the time. And so yeah. he, he's trying to, like, have a little more of a work-life balance and uh, – as well as just put even more work into his knives, he puts a ton of work into them already. Uh, and yeah. so the price is going to go up uh, a bit for sure from where the coin yeah. can were. Um, DJ is saying that Ashi Hamono is famous for making mono steel knives. They do the HD2 line for Kanosuke and have mm. lines for Hitohira as well. And then Ernest says, I wish knife were carry Kanosuke and Hitohira to no Hamono as well. Paul says, I buy based on how it feels, then I track it in a spreadsheet. That's true. Paul does do that. And then mm -hmm. E30 Birdie could get away with a Guto, but didn't choose that life. They belong to the N plus one club. Yeah. Happens. Same here. Happens. Um, let's hit up some more of my questions real quick. Sure. We're doing pretty good today. There's been a lot of great conversation. Yeah. Thanks, guys. And... Like, we've been talking about knives the whole time. We haven't yeah. been, like, there's been very little dicking around. Oh, we're, we got halfway through the questions. We're doing good. Um, bum, 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 bum. Um, do you have knife sets? Mm -hmm. I get that one a lot. Uh, you know what? We yes, can put we do. a set together for you, for sure. Yeah. You know, there's, like, the opportunity. on For the longest time, it wasn't as easily available. But yeah, you could buy a knife set online. Um, we could put one together for you in the store too. A set yeah. to me is just what collection of knives are you going to use? Yeah. I think a lot of people leave the house, like Nathan kind of hinted at like the $150 knife block earlier. Yeah. It's not as well, we've, fun, we've been it? told that's what a knife set is. And that's those are all the yeah. knives you need is all of the ones that come in the block. But yeah. I don't necessarily agree. Yeah. You know, I did a video on that often. recently. It's not often you walk into a clothing store and point at a mannequin and be like, I want that one, please. Oh, that's a good analogy. I like that. Yeah. You know, so unless you're me, I do that sometimes, <laughs> but you know, I go clothes. You, did, you just go to the mechanic shop and say, years. I'll take what he's wearing. Yeah. Yeah. If I could get away with wearing like coveralls. We were I having a discussion would. in the warehouse today. You know, yeah. I feel like you get away with that at, at Especially if you're just standing at the sharpening station wearing coveralls. Yeah. Yeah. Going to my Operation Come Home meetings and coveralls. Um, hey, Nathan, can these knives go in the dishwasher? I, yes, technically. They'll fit. You can put them in. <laughs> you might not like what comes out, though, right? Yeah. Like, yeah, they might get real you know rusty. What? Dishwashers are bad for stuff you give a shit about. 
Yeah. All right. Good for things you don't care about. Yeah. You know what? The chemicals are harsher than regular dish soap and water. The heat is up and down. Mm -hmm. Stuff rattles around. It's not a good, it's not the best choice. And if you got but a handle, a lot of people ask that. if you got a knife handle made with some of this stuff, wood. Yeah. It gets oh, really it unhappy. Like it. If it spends oh, a lot of time in water and heat and detergent, it really and stuff. doesn't like it. It, it okay. doesn't take long for it start, to start looking bad. Hey, number three was can I cut a squash with this? Absolutely. Absolutely, you can. Yeah. You want to just be careful, right? It's um, someone, I think E30 Birdie said it in the comments earlier. You need to be careful about twisting and, and torquing your knife, right? Um, you know, a squash. Which is funny because, like, when I was growing up, we didn't eat a lot of squash in my house. And mm. the number of times I got to answer, can I cut squash with this, makes me think that the world has changed a fair amount. Hey, man, squash is still cheap. Yeah. So, but um, it's the torquing, right? You get If you get stuck in a squash, don't try to pry it off. Mm. Back up and try again, right? Be mindful of the woody stems. Those will get you every time. Yeah. Yeah, that right. will chip your knife, guaranteed. Yeah. Same thing with bones, you know, like we talked about cutting meat. Sure, go for it. If you come in contact with a bone, back off, try again. Don't try to force your way through. That's totally. where bad things happen. Yeah. Okay, what about this, Nathan? What happens if I chip my knife or it gets rusty? Well, we have a very talented team of knife sharpeners and yeah. repair folks. Uh, who can fix yeah. that for you? Uh, the reality is um, if you don't cut bones or frozen food or other really hard things and you take good care of your knife, it's probably not going to happen. Uh, but if you're, you know, in law or, or parent or roommate or somebody else who doesn't know what they're doing, you it, it, it can happen and it does happen. And it uh, happens. yeah, it happens we, to us. We have, chipped my knives. oh yeah. Yeah. I, uh, I was a little haphazard with my knives when I was moving and, a couple of them got mm. dinged up a bit. Um, and we, we've actually fixed some pretty... I mean, a guy sent us a couple knives last year that had been in a car accident. Mm. And we fixed them. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and One of them and, was like the letter S. <laughs> yeah. I saw yeah, that one. In great shape. Um, yeah. So we fixed some pretty bad stuff. And, and chances are what's happened to your knife, while disappointing, is, uh, is very easily fixable. Um, and yeah. the first time sharpening is free. That includes any repair that needs needs doing to the blade. Yeah. And rust is easy. Rust, just scrub the rust off. Yeah. Just get yourself a damp cloth with some rust eraser yeah. or a barkeeper's friend, even some baking soda. And here's the one that everyone's been hinting after. When is it going to be back in stock? Yeah. Right? <laughs> we do our best. Right. But in order for us to get it for you, it, someone's got to make it. Right. Yeah. So, um, you know, stuff like the Tinker Tank, like Shigafusa, like Inora, like Uchigumos, that kind of things. Like, we're doing our best to get it. Well, chances are, if it's not in stock on the website, but it's still on the website, there's an order in for it. Nato yeah. has placed an order. Um, and when we're going to get it really depends on who makes it. Yeah. 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 Things like, you know, Masakage, Moritaka, even Takeda. He, he's taking a break right now. But in general, we get those knives quarterly-ish. Yeah. You know, every few months. And so if you sign up on the, on the product page for emails when it comes back in stock, then we'll tell you when it's back in stock and you can grab one. Yeah. Easy stuff. Yeah. Garage sale is always great for those kinds of things, especially some of the crazy one-off stuff. Garage sale is an excellent time to be looking for that. Mm -hmm. um, but you can always get in touch with us as well, right? Yeah. There's if also we, the new uh, arrivals page on our website too. I forget about that. Yeah. So here, yeah. let's fire... When do you want to be done? Because I think today will go as long as we want it to. Yeah, Dave. if people keep asking us good questions, uh, you know, I, you I, know I what? have a busy morning, so I'm, I'm good to keep going. It's, it's two hours off. later there. Yeah, my cutoff is in an, like, absolute cutoff is in an hour and a half from now. Okay. Um, I'm leaving. Sounds regardless. good. Regardless. 
of what's going <laughs> you just, on. You'll just walk so, away and I'll just. I will. Yeah. I'll leave my computer like, and everything. I don't need it. Okay. Sounds good. This is work stuff. I, I got like, you know. Well, we just get to come with you. Like you'll bring us into your car and we'll just get to ride home with you. Well, until the Wi Fi, until the Wi Fi cuts out <laughs> or this cord, this cord that I've got plugged into the modem. You know, I'll make it to the end of the driveway. So Benjamin, <laughs> the modem will be bouncing behind your car. <laughs> yeah, it'll be like a just just married, car, <laughs> but with internet crap. Just live streamed. Benjamin says, "Why are you guys not going into custom handles more? Mm. I feel like this is quite a market gap, since makers don't usually offer multiple options and they focus on steel. That's true, they do. Um, the thing about custom handles, it's kind of like anything." We're working on making sure that we're dealing with people who we can get lots of them. Yeah. Right. We got to make sure that we can get enough of them because it's yeah. not just, I, I don't know, like knifeware is more than just Nathan and I talking on YouTube. Right. We've got, we've got a bunch of stores. We got the website. We kind of got to make sure that we can get enough for everyone. Yeah. Um, but that, that's why we've historically I, brought them in during the garage sale. Cause if we only have, you know, yeah. a few dozen, we only have a few dozen, and people understand. Yeah, I uh, did go digging around in Nauto's little sharpening playpen, and I stole oh, yeah. some that I found. Oh, nice! So I told Tiffany, you know, because Tiffany yeah. will make sure that the computer gets dealt with. But so yeah, no, you know what, Benjamin? It is something that we are working on, and we have been. It turns out though that a the pandemic is not a good time to be getting new suppliers. Yeah. Everyone's kind of over a barrel. Yeah, a little bit. Um, well, and it's tough because we want to support craftspeople, um, but often, you know, they're doing it as their side job or yeah. or they're also relying on supply, right? Like they have to get their wood from somewhere. Prices yeah. are all over the place. Reliability of supply chain. Um, so there's, there's a lot of reasons. last year when two by fours were like the cost of gold? Oh my God, yeah. Yeah. I had a few in my now garage. I should have traded them for a new car. You could have, but now you, then you'd need to go find more two by fours to buy gas for your car. <laughs> yeah, true. It's nonstop. Um, we do want to get into more custom handles. Where we've been in talks with some folks, and we will continue to get them for our garage sale. But but hopefully yeah. we'll get them as a more regular. Maybe thing. definitely. Maybe trying. Benjamin knows somebody. Oh yeah, seriously. Benjamin, if you, if you know somebody who's into that and like does it and like some level of scale, what let us that? know. Yeah, Earth Punk. You mentioned Great splitting name. the lobster earlier. Being new to Japanese knives, what would be the best one to split lobsters? Well, it depends on how good you are at it. Mm. If you kind of suck at it, I'm going to recommend a Moritaka Deba or a Cleaver. Yeah. I like the Deba. I use the Deba sometimes. I'm left-handed, so I don't often get to play with single bevel knives. Right. So the Deba that I have is made by the Moritakas, and all of their traditional shapes are double beveled. Right. And that thing's like swinging a hammer. Yeah, no kidding. And I Not like it for hammer. those kinds of jobs. Yeah. So I would use that. I would use, because it is, like I said, it's double beveled. Don't go grabbing just any old Deba. You can chip up the edge. The edge is finer than the weight of the knife would indicate. Um, I like a 240 Guto, you know. Yeah. Get a Tojiro red handle. And that's what you're going to do all day? Yeah. If you work at a seafood place and you're splitting lobsters, get a Tojiro red handle. You're going to spend 100 bucks, and that knife is going to be amazing. I, I use my uh, my Hele Lapland. That big. That's a big knife. Big Laplander knife is pretty sweet. It's like really a baby like machete. Yeah. That knife. Yeah, basically. Yeah, essentially what you want. You know what? Instead of like. I'm going to stick with my Moritaka Deba as the best one to do it. But essentially what you want is a shorter kind of primary bevel so you don't have too thin of an edge. And something that's not like, don't buy like some over-the-top hand-folded Damascus. If yeah. your job is splitting lobsters, you need something that kind of looks the part, right? Like a little rugged, not nothing to be fussed over. You know, uh, DJ, DJ has got a collection. Ooh. Current knife rack is a tank, an Enru 240 AS Guto, Danka 195, a 
I presume a 195 Guto, or is it a 195 Nakiri? And a 20-year-old Anru Ko Santoku that I use as a petty. My other knives just stay in the boxes. I swap my knives out at home. It's kind of like, I like Kevin's analogy of an art gallery. Some stuff goes into storage, and some stuff comes out. Yeah, totally. I change it up all the time. My Masashi 240, this is going to sound weirder than it's meant to, but my Masashi 240 and my Denka, I've got five knives that are in a knife roll under my bed from the last time I came out to Calgary. And I had the knife roll in my luggage, and I unpacked my luggage. I just put the knife roll like beside the bed, and I've now kicked it under the bed. That's so I've got about bag. yeah. Some people I've got have like about, a double bag. You've got a, a knife roll. I've got a knife roll with about four thousand dollars worth of knives <laughs> just under my bed. So you really do keep the money under the mattress, then? I do. Yeah, yeah. I hate these banks. <laughs> Al Woodward. I put my money in knives. Yeah. Not it's always money in the banana stand. Um, do 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 not a 101 question, so feel free to skip it. I don't answer all of them. There's no yeah. such thing as a 101 question. If I don't give you an answer, it's because I don't know it. Uh, for the collector degenerates, are there any really special knives that knifeware gets in, like the kaiju? Like Godzilla's a kaiju, right? Is that what we're talking about? Or do you think he means like the Kujira? Uh, I don't know. Now I'm like, did we have a knife called Kaiju? I, God, my memory is just... Oh, no, no. There's like a... I found a website. I don't know what this is. I really like, for collector's knives, I really like those Michiko engraved knives that we get, again, during yeah. the garage sale. Because um, she gets really good quality knives, but then... Uh, custom engraves them by hand with like beautiful, you know, like an image of a geisha or a tiger or a mm. koi fish. Yeah. We had one. There's this kid. I can't remember his name. But he came in and he bought, because we talked about Kobayashi. He bought a Kobayashi knife for, it was kind of like he had some gift cards from Christmas and this was his yeah, first yeah. knife. And this kid like went off like a firework. He bought that and then like two weeks later he came into the store he's like hey i wanted to show you this other knife i got i was like oh, okay cool and he opens it up and it's one of those michiko it was the one with the koi on it oh really and i was like that's your second knife yeah. and he's like yeah and i was like is your credit card in your name <laughs> <laughs> and it was kind of no. like but yeah, no. You know what? Sometimes you just kind of do what you you go for it. The stuff I look for now, um, yeah. Um, the last couple garage sales, we've had some hand folded Damascus from Mizaki San. That's been something to check out. Yeah, we've had some really crazy Honyaki knives rolling around. The past I really like while. those those Tetsujin Metal Flow knives because they they're made by by a fellow that used to work at Knifeware, which I think is super cool. And they've yeah. got a, pa a wavy pattern that would almost look you think was Damascus, but it's actually like the grain of the steel flowing. Mm, I didn't get to see one of those in person, but <sighs> yeah, no, there's some cool. There's always some cool stuff in garage sale, and like that's the stuff like you got to set an alarm for. Yeah. Yeah, like if you're not like at your computer at ten at like nine fifty nine with your cart ready to go, you don't get to have that knife. Yeah, you know. That's that's uh, why autofill exists is for the knife or garage sale. Yeah, yeah. Um, our buddy Paul says he was at a barbecue competition in the states. Cynthia, who is his uh, his better half, if I can get away with saying so um posted a picture of his latest acquisition in the dishwasher thinking it was funny kevin almost banned me from the store as a result <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah uh, um Brutal. <laughs> robert says i've got people using their knives as pry bars shake my head a knife is not a pry bar but this goes along with the lines of using the tool for what it's designed for. Agreed. I thought SMH stood for something way more profane. I literally, you, I just learned what that means. Wow. Yeah. I had to look it up one day. I didn't just know. You know. Um, Chris Rowe, another quick question. You don't have to just, you don't have to be like. Yeah, they can be slow questions. questions. They can be we've slow. Been, we've already been here for an hour, 45 minutes. Like, yeah, we're, I'm, not that, I'm not that, I'm not very quick myself, Chris. No. Rowe. 
Chris and I don't actually has... do anything important, so we just this is the no. most important part of our week. Yeah, pretty much. Um, a reputable custom knife maker here in New Zealand uses D2 steel. What are your thoughts on that? I think D2 is like a pretty common tool steel, is it not? Yeah, I, th I like believe You see so. a lot of knives made out of D2. I think it's like easily forged. I think that's why a lot of people use it. Yeah. Um, I can't I can't speak from the place of an actual knife maker, Chris, but I can look things up and maybe interpret it. Yeah, from what I understand, it's good stuff, but I I don't have much uh, helpful to add. Again, like Nauto, if you tune in next week, uh, Nauto's Nerdy Power Hour, same bat time, same bat channel as this show. Um, but it's... Well, here uh, we go. He, he I, is... Of, of us video hosts, he is by far the most knowledgeable about this kind of stuff. We just kind of I'm the one most likely to swear. That's why I get invited along. Um, but here's what Wikipedia told me upon a, or not Wikipedia, the Google. Google told me this mm. one. D2 is air hardened and contains between 10% and 13% chromium, which is unusually high. D2 steel has a hardness in the range of 55 to 62 HRC, which makes it which makes it a very durable and high-end knife steel. So the thing to know about 55 to 62 is a quite a big jump, right? Mm -hmm. That's from like that's from like Henkels to SG2. Yeah. Right? Like that's a big jump. So it is quite possible that this guy is making, you know what? He, based on the steel. He's either making something okay, or he's making something really good. Yeah. Right. So we're gonna we're gonna give him the benefit of the doubt. You say he's reputable. We're gonna presume he's good. He's probably making a really qual like a, a like a quality edge, right? Yeah. I can't speak to you know design or whatnot, but there's no reason why that knife should be bad. No, absolutely not. So. Oh hey. Uh Ernest, funny enough, was responding uh, to that collector's knife item uh, that I that I was answering about the well, we were both answering, but I mentioned the Tetsujin, and so did Ernest. We actually have those Tetsujin nice. in stock right now. I I, didn't, I thought they had sold out. Oh. I just popped the link in the comments there. I'm gonna look it up myself. Yeah, I'll get to beautiful. that after. So Robert is saying D2 is great so long as it's heat treated properly. Okay. Do, do, otherwise, you just end up with a knife-shaped object. Uh, E30 Birdie has got one of the metal flows on the way. Hard nice. to find in Europe. Corey says, just want to say thank you guys for doing these videos. There's not another knife shop out there that does these kind of things. You know what, Corey? We like, like sharing like, knowledge. Yeah. Yeah, and we do all kinds of weird stuff. I bet you there's no other knife shops that have line cook Olympics and then spend a day with a puppet. Nobody is Spoiler brave enough to act as stupid as we do on live yeah. camera. That's that. You know what? I think that's what it is. It's a mixture of bravery and stupidity. Yeah, we just got nothing to lose. Really? Yeah, I know. My father-in-law told me the other day. He's like, he said something to the tune of, "He's like, you know, when I knew that you were a bit, a bit of a wild one." And I was like, "What? What do you mean?" He's like, "It's when you." Decided that you were going to shave with a straight razor on the news. <laughs> we've, we've both done that. We've both done that. I didn't, I either forgot or didn't know that you had done that. Yeah. 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 When, no, we when, both. When did you, when did you shave on the news? Oh, maybe 2018. Because my first 2018, time, 2019. You know, when I shaved on the news, it was, it was awesome. It was really fun. Um, you got the, you got the anchor to do it too, didn't you? So that that was afterwards. So the first yeah. time, uh, I had never shaved in front of another person with a straight razor before. I had been using one at home for a little while. Yeah, but I, you know, I, I just brought like a little mirror and stuff. So I was like trying to look in the camera and you know, <laughs> uh, uh, present while looking at this like tiny little circle mirror that was down on the table. Yeah. And it was, uh, I got it done pretty quick. I was pretty impressed with myself, but it was uh, it was quite the adventure. Teaching classes was no big deal after that. And then, yeah, the other time yeah. was at the end of November, and I taught the host how to shave off his mustache with a straight mm. razor. And he, That's he why I have a mustache. He did pretty good. 
That's why I have a mustache is I started using a straight razor. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's the hardest area to shave. Yeah. Um, Benjamin says, thanks. E30 Birdie says, I'm hoping that 2022 brings the Knifeware podcast so mm. I have something to listen to on my commute in the morning. You know what? There's been I'm not making promises, but it's a conversation that comes up. I think we, we just need to know well. that more than just you would yeah. uh, would listen and to. And we got to know you got to you, you got to help us figure out what we're going to talk about. Obviously we'll talk about yeah. nice, but other stuff too, right? Cuz uh uh I I don't love those podcasts where it's just the hosts talking about stuff. Like, you know, yeah. once it's fun to throw some conversation in there, but but I think we need some good <laughs> topics as opposed to just yeah. bullshitting and Kevin telling dad jokes. So we'll we'll speaking need to come up with of, some content. Speaking of, Giorgio wants to know why is there a Swiss flag in the back? Greetings from Switzerland. And do you work with someone in Switzerland? Okay, so Giorgio, <laughs> the reason why the flag is here is that Kevin, I think I even deleted it out of the captions today. I oh, meant thank to. God. I've meant to a million times. I meant to, but he keeps putting it back. That's the problem. It's, it's there again. Yeah, here it is. Here it is. It's like okay. that haunted doll that keeps appearing after you throw oh, it yeah. away. So, Giorgio, Kevin, who you may or may not know is the owner of Knifeware and often my counterpart when we do these videos, he says, hey, Chris, do you know much about Switzerland? And then I say, <sighs> and he says, I don't know much about Switzerland but I hear their flag is a big plus. And he got on this kick where he did this several times a day, several times a week. And a fella named the Voog, who's a buddy of mine, bought me this flag to put up. And I do it out of politeness for Chris, knowing that it often makes me have to listen to the joke. <laughs> But Switzerland, I, I've never been. I had, when I was in culinary school, I had some instructors who were from Switzerland. They were very smart. I learned a lot from them. That's all I've really got. I don't know if we, uh, if you're, if you want to, you know, I don't know that Knifeware Switzerland is in the works, but. We got to work. I've we got to get into Toronto first. I've heard crazier that's, that's stories. <laughs> yeah. Robert, back to our handle conversation. I know some people that deal in wood, but not just the handles. Ben Ben says something, Josh or something. Maybe he's got a friend named Josh. He does handles. Do do do. And then we're talking. Corey pipes in with most shapes from Tosa and Kumamoto or double bevel, even things like their Deba and Yanagi. So lefties don't feel left out. Yeah, that's where uh, yeah. the Moritakas are from. Uh, Yetsushiro, which is in the Kumamoto area. Um, ba -ba -bum. Oh, the Voog says you too. Oh, he's been watching. He knows I'm talking about him. Always watching, making sure you got that flag on your wall. Yeah, I wouldn't dare take it down. He bought me a t-shirt too that's got oh, like Statler and Waldorf on it from the Muppets because Alex and I were chirping each other one day, I think, and he bought one for <laughs> each of us. That's awesome. Um the Dank has a 195 Guto with red pack a handle bought directly from the man himself in Tokyo. Mm. So the thing about, okay, so you were in Fujiwara's little shop. Um, if you go through that door in the back door, you're in his house. And I stay, I stayed with them for a night. It was, Oh, cool. It was crazy. It was a good time. He's got a dog too. The dog doesn't like Kevin. It's kind of funny. It just barked at him the whole time. <laughs> That's really funny. If you see Rio Deba, it means double bevel for those wondering, by the way. That's oh, interesting. That's sometimes great. we see um, sometimes we see Yo Deba, but that might refer to the fact that it has a Western handle. But sometimes you see it where it's like a double bevel knife. So Ryu Deba, mm -hmm. that's handy to know. Oh, Konosuke Kaiju. Right. I knew I had heard about those. Okay, I'm looking at one right now. Yeah. That's quite a nice knife. Yeah, I'm going to look it up. You're skipping ahead. Well, you know, I, I want to be prepared. I want to look at it too. Yeah, it's nice. it's a cool looking knife. Um, I yeah, honestly, like a collector's collector's knife for me is is that Tetsujin Metal Flow. Um, yeah. If you are looking for something that's kind of like this kaiju that's got just like really beautifully uh, beveled and just like 
you know, not crazy flashy like any fancy Damascus, but just like a really, really reliable, high performing knife. Uh, those Yoshikazu Tanaka ones we get from Sakai Kikumori. That's a collaboration. Mm. We got to pick who we wanted to forge a knife, who we wanted to sharpen it, the steel, all that. Um, but it is on that level of like just really yeah. perfect, just yeah. like incredible beveling, really consistently sharpened. You know what? If you're into knives that are in that kind of price point and that kind of level, you should look at knives from uh, Itsuo Doi. Mm, yeah, he, totally. like that, like Ken Gata Guto. That's yeah. a knife that like looks the business, but is yeah. meant to be used too. Right. Okay. Interesting. So DJ Sergioto. Speaking of Yoshikazu Tanaka, the kaiju is also forged by him. Because oh. I looked at that knife, I was like, oh, that reminds me of the, the Yoshikazu Tanaka that we get. But we get ours sharpened by um, somebody. Where, where is it? Ajioka-san. Because we, we, Naoto was uh, in Sakai. Yeah. And he, they, they laid out a whole bunch of knives that were forged by Tanaka-san yeah. and sharpened by a bunch of different guys. And Naoto really loved the one for, uh, sharpened by Ajioka-san. Um, mm. If you want to learn more about that, tune in next week for the Naoto's Nerdy Power Hour because we're we're talking about what makes a master knife sharpener. But um, but yeah, that's same sort of idea. That was just our preferred knife. Yeah, yeah. And if yeah. they're uh, so, if this knife, oh, okay. So then he goes on to say, uh, polished by Ivan the sharpener on JNATS. JNATS means natural stones, Japanese natural stones. Right. For anyone right. that's following along at home um that makes sense because when i looked up that knife and they were available at tosho knife arts or they had them on their mm. website um ivan is the brother of the owner of tosho knife arts okay gotcha or there's some sort of relationship there they might not be brother i don't know if they're there but right. they he used to work there or something i in my head that he's their brother but i don't know uh, yeah. knife where I can't sell them because Konosuke works exclusively with seven retailers around the world. It's true. That's all true. Mm. Um, we used to have Konosuke knives. Yeah. Um, that's generally called banding in the steel. The temp causes separation. Oh, we're talking about the patterning from the uh, yeah. other Tanaka knives. Robert's good here. Um, Robert was asking what, uh, where do you like your knives hardness to fall? What, uh, what RC hardness do you feel is acceptable on the Rockwell scale? Kind of like, uh, most of my knives are in that 61, 62 zone. Mm. I don't worry about like, them too much. I got some yeah. that are harder. I just don't use them that much. Yeah. I, I'll be honest. That's kind of, I kind of focus first on like look and feel and then maker yeah. and, uh, and steel and stuff. But most of the knives I've ended up really loving are like Agami Super ish, like 63, yeah. 64. I really like. Yeah. Yeah. I kind of like, I'll be honest with everybody. Like, I kind of still chop. Like, I'm, I got a lot of stuff to do. <laughs> right. You know, like, if I'm like, if I'm chopping veggies, I'm not really taking my time. Well, like, you still got, got a lot of stuff to do. It's just not cooking related anymore. Yeah. You know, so I, although every now and again, and this will, this is probably like the nerdiest I'll get is like sometimes like if I'm like I'm in a mood to do like a good mood. I'm not like just grumbling around. Yeah. Um, sometimes I will make like a soup or something where I want to like small dice or brunoise is all of the garnish, you know, like I'll do that every now and again. Yeah. Where I'll really take my time and enjoy what I'm cooking. Yeah. Like doing like a, I don't know, like a jigsaw puzzle kind of thing. Like Probably. I'm in a similar mind when I'm doing that, but it doesn't. Eat a jazzy up. bear, brunois, some carrots and some shallots. Yeah, exactly. For a little while. You know, yeah. laugh, laugh at the meatballs in the bowl. You understand. You, you <laughs> Yeah, you're making me laugh just thinking about it. <laughs> I'm already yeah. in the state of mind. Yeah, if you guys ever, if you live in a place where you can just go to the store, eat a bunch of weed gummies. And then just chop vegetables. It's a not bunch. bad. I was thinking like yeah. half of one. You're not supposed to eat the whole thing. It depends on the on the strength. I don't read the labels. I just yeah, no. if there's two, 
in the package, I eat one of them. Right. Okay. Because I learned that if I eat both of them, it's too much. My father-in-law and his wife bought a really big one one time and they mm. split it right before a concert and they didn't get past the opening act because they had to go home because <laughs> he didn't read the label. And yeah. They both had about 80 milligrams of THC. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a too lot. Many. That's yeah. too many milligrams. Um, yeah, I'm like, a, I'm in that like maybe, yeah, you know, I push it to like maybe 64. You know, I've got okay. my Denka. That guy's like 66 ish. Oh, I thought you meant milligrams. I got my Hap, okay, yeah. Hap 40. No. <laughs> no, yeah, we're, we're, not, we're back talking, talking about, talking about work again. Right, right. Yeah, Algami Super is like a sweet spot. I've been using like SLD for a little while. Mm. Um, Shuvam, what price point would be a good starting point for a knife for a home cook compared to a professional chef? No one likes it when I say this but I, I firmly believe it that a home cook deserves nice things mm. as much as a chef Yeah, and you're in a better situation to take care of it. Yeah. You and probably a better some, situation to, uh, to buy it too. And to not have it stolen. Yeah. Um, you know what? I tell people all the time I can get you, we can pick out a knife like a chef's knife and maybe it's a Santoku for about mm -hmm. 110 bucks. There's yeah. cheaper ones too. Yeah. Right. But let's start at that kind of 100, 150 point. If you've saved up, and it depends on where you live too. I'm talking the Canadian dollars here. If right. you save up and you got 100, like 150, you get a few options. If you can save up 250, you can more than double the options you get to look at. Yeah. Yeah. 150 to 300 bucks gets you an amazing knife, no matter where in that spectrum. Oh, MRK. You can always remind Kevin that you won the dad joke competition when he goes on about Switzerland. Right. I forgot we did that. That's yeah. true. I think I, I blocked am, it out. I am measurably funnier than Kevin. I mean, that's not like a a tall hurdle to cross, but yes. Yeah. Um, it's also that I can just choose not to laugh. You know, like it's Kevin doesn't have that button. Kevin, Kevin gets the giggles. The dad jokes. Yeah. He'll yeah. Love them. Have you, I, Robert is asking if you've ever seen Nabuya Hayashi knives. I have not. I presume that's why Nathan is typing right now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there's Hayashi breads. I suppose yeah. uh, the word knives. After St stick a link in there, Robert, if you got one. E30 Birdie says J Nats are an even deeper rabbit hole than knives are. It's true. The worst thing about natural stones is that they can only give you an approximation. Even if you buy two things that have the same name, they're going to be different because mm. they're literally rocks coming out of the ground. Yeah. They're, yeah. Oh my God. They're too much for me. Too, too confusing. And <laughs> yeah, I tried. Yeah. I know how to use the ones that we have in the shop. I so I, I, found, on those. I found a link to this knife maker from a forum post. Yeah. And it's very much like a web 1.0 website. Like I'm surprised there's not some gifts of like cartoons dancing. Uh, like this, just chopping. Yeah, totally. But there's, I mean, there's a lot of stuff in Japanese. I'll have to get now to check this out. looks like he makes Tamahagane steel. I see, I see like a, a crucible with flame yeah. and like steel pouring out of it and a big chunk of tamagane there we go we'll have yeah. to look into that a little bit deeper yeah. looks like a lot well, of I'll... like kind of craft knives and he goes and uh oh that's fun yeah some cool stuff al woodworks says thanks for the education i'm gonna bust out oh be careful be careful don't call it terry he's gonna chop your fingers off he might bust you out yeah Bust out a few of your teeth, like what I'm doing. Um, DJ's heading out. He's going to bed because it's like four in the morning for him. Rocket Man saying hi. hi. The Voog says favorite music to slice to. This is good. I can talk about this for a while. Okay. Um, it depends on what I'm cooking. Sometimes it kind of depends on how quickly shit needs to get done. 
mm. to be honest. Yeah. Because like if dinner, if I got 15 minutes to make dinner, like kill them all is a good, is a good you just, album. You choose your BPM based on what, how quick it yeah. needs to happen. Yeah. But if I'm just like, if I'm, but if it's like Jazzy Bear Soup, <laughs> for sure, I'm going to put on, like, I'll listen to the Grateful Dead and make Jazzy Bear Soup. Sure. <laughs> just throw on a Pink Floyd album. Yeah. Maeve comes home. I'm lying on the floor, staring <laughs> at the ceiling. Yeah. Soup's bubbled away. It's Shine on your pot. crazy diamond. Yeah. 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 Dana Carvey's chopping broccoli. <laughs> I uh, I switch between I like something that's kind of relaxing when I'm cooking. Usually, mm. sometimes I'll play like some Latin music, especially if I'm cooking in the summer. But like have a glass of wine and play something with some energy. But usually, it's either some jazz or uh, or like vaporwave because I like listening to weird stuff. There's an artist sometimes. called Windows ninety six that if you want to listen to some weird stuff, check them out. I uh, if I'm sitting in front of the barbecue all day, yeah. And like my day started at 4 a.m. I'll probably listen to like I'll listen to a lot of like old outlaw country. Yeah. Willie, nice. Willie Nelson and friends. Yeah. I'll listen to that and then be drunk before my family wakes up. <laughs> that makes for a weird day though. Yeah. Um Ben says, let's get into that J Nat rabbit hole. I am not the guy. I, yeah, nothing against it. I'm just not. I don't, I don't know, know anything about it. I don't know enough to satisfy you. I don't think. Yeah, yeah. Um, if you like getting into that JNAT rabbit hole, join our Discord. There's a link down in the description. I am terrible at going on it, but uh, there's a bunch I use, of folks. I use Discord to play Dungeons and Dragons. Right? I didn't even know what could be for work. Uh, yeah, so there's a bunch of folks that like like those kinds of stones and, and spend lots of time with them that would love to talk about them or tune in next week. Uh, now just nerdy power hour is our monthly show where yeah. we get real nerdy about knife sharpening, uh, including Japanese natural stones, uh, technique knife makers. Next week we're talking about uh, what makes a master knife sharpener really getting into like the guys that do it for a living and are supremely talented at it. Cause they don't get enough recognition. We're trying to highlight mm -hmm. them a little more. So, um, I'm gonna. I want to answer Giorgio's question because it's an mm. easy maintenance one, mm -hmm. and then I think we should start doing some housekeeping and give everyone like this is our. It's getting close. Cool. We've been at start. this for two hours and ten minutes. Start playing the Oscars music. Yeah. So Giorgio has a birchwood handle knife and wants to ask how to treat it. Just oil, a varnish mix. I really like. We have this stuff. That is not within reach, but it's a mixture of mineral or mineral oil and beeswax. Um, there it is. That stuff is going to work really well. Um, it's, if it's one of those Miyabi birchwood handles that I'm thinking of, uh, those things are they'll take that wax really, really well, and um, it'll kind of darken up the wood in all the right spots and lighten it up in the other spots. Um, yeah, don't go messing around with varnish and stuff. It's not really necessary. If you don't have any of that handy, I know you said that you're in Switzerland. Um, mineral oil, like, um, I just buy, to be honest, like, I'll buy the mineral oil from, like, the pharmacy, like the yeah. drugstore. That, go to the laxative section. Yeah. Apparently, people drink it, and it helps you poop. I don't know. I've never done it. But... That'll work well on your knives too. You want to avoid um, like oil, like cooking oils because they tend to get gummy, and they um, yeah they're gonna get smell nasty after a while. Yeah, and they get kind of rancid. So yeah, Giorgio, if you're uh, if you're planning on ordering something from Knifeware, just make sure you can get a tin of that uh, tucked onto your order. Yeah. Um, Mike H, for knife steels, do you have preferred type of steel to the knife shape? I don't think that I do. Um, I, I kind of link the knife. I think I link the steel more to how often I'm going to use the knife and what I'm going to use the knife for. Yeah. Right. Cause like, I do have a knife that when I was a cook, I really only used it for slicing chives. Totally. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like I might <clears throat> prefer a stainless petty because I use a, I don't use a petty knife a lot of the time, but I use it when I'm cooking breakfast and I'm probably not going to wash it right away. Uh, or 
like if I get getting a Sujihiki, I'd probably get car- some kind of carbon steel because I want oh, you know yeah. I want a sharper, longer, longer edge retention kind of situation. Yeah. Um, uh, Philip was saying uh, about this knife maker, the Nobuya yeah. Hayashi. Apparently, he has one of one of one of uh, his knives. And oh yeah. Makes own tamagane, which is this stuff. We got this chunk from the Moritakas. They gave us oh, a couple cool. of pieces when we were there, and now it just lives on our YouTube set. But uh, yeah, it's pretty, pretty neat stuff. They they take this like iron rich sand and then pack it with charcoal and burn it and burn out all the iron and then collect this like liquid mass of stuff and hammer all the impurities out and then eventually they make a knife for a sword out of it. Badass. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's my knife over there. There's oh. one behind me. The 360 Moritaka. Yeah. I uh, I sold a fellow one on Sunday. Went to a brisket smoking mm. class in Calgary. If anybody wants to learn how to smoke a brisket and you live in Calgary, um, Prairie Dog Brewing is doing this class in collaboration with our buddy Neil Zeller, who's on a recent episode mm. of Sharp Knives Rock, and us. And you get a Tojiro DP Sujihiki with the class, but you can also upgrade. One guy upgraded to a, a 360 because that's the brisket knife, right? It's the right one. That's the one you do. Yeah. So, um, well... Let's start. Uh, yeah, we do have some news that we covered in the beginning. The I think the most exciting being that if you bring your knives in to be sharpened starting next week, we are going to donate 100% of the sharpening proceeds to. Um, I can't remember what that extends out to. World Central World, Kitchen. World Central Kitchen. Mm-hmm. So they're currently operating in Ukraine um yeah well around you know, ukraine on, on the border oh yeah like on the border yeah and like po- on poland right yeah yeah and Belarus um, and the other places yeah so they're um helping feed refugees and training people and hiring local people to um to assist with that uh, it's headed by a very talented and very kind-hearted chef named jose andreas um it's definitely it's a really good cause. They do really good work. They don't just come in and dump a food hamper on your doorstep and run off. They make yeah. sure that it gets done properly. Yeah. So and they cook like local food too. They don't just show up with a bunch of cheeseburgers yeah. and onion rings. They're like, you know, yeah. making whatever food is specific to that culture in that region. Yeah. Um, what else we got? I should probably tell you to like and subscribe to this video. Mm-hmm. Like the video and subscribe to the channel. Yeah. If you want to um, check out. Yeah, there we go. Garage sales only a yeah. couple months away. Oh, he, so here's an exciting piece of news. The garage sale used to happen after Kevin went to Japan, met with a whole bunch of the makers. I saw that on your Instagram. <laughs> when is that from? <laughs> it's like two days ago. That's a Mario I've, hat, right? Yeah. I have a nephew oh, who's obsessed with Mario, and I was walking <laughs> through the mall, and I saw this hat. I had to buy it for him. <laughs> That's incredible. So clearly, I had to have a glazy-eyed photo taken with it first. <laughs> so funny. <laughs> yeah, that's just that's for everyone there. That's me wearing. Imagine he's gonna go to school wearing a man's head as a hat. Yeah. <laughs> it's twisted. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> So um, as you were, Mike and well, Nalto. Yeah. <laughs> you broke my focus. Um, yeah, so Kevin used to go to Japan. Kevin and Nalto used to go to Japan. They meet with all these makers, buy a bunch of crazy stuff, bring it back to Canada. Obviously, you know, this pandemic thing has gotten in the way that last couple of years. Now, luckily, we have all these great friends and, and connections in Japan who have helped us continue to source things for the garage sale. But this year, Nalto's going back. He's going back to Japan next month. Uh, and he is going to be meeting with a whole bunch of different makers, Sashi san and lots of other people who <laughs> currently don't remember who. But um, yeah, it'll be for the first garage sale where we've actually been to Japan before the sale. And uh, what's more is we're going to be shooting a whole bunch of video while we're over there. Mike's bringing a couple of cameras and some other gear, and we're going to shoot interviews with these blacksmiths and kind of like learn how their different techniques work, probably visit a few sharpeners and get into like how you 
like really high high level knife sharpening works. And so over the course of the next six months, we'll have some videos coming out on the YouTube channel um, about our, our trip to Japan and all the different people that we meet and, you know, their different techniques and all this kind of stuff. So stay tuned for that. It'll be a lot of fun. And then, That'll of course, the garage good. sale is, is, in, is in May, May 16th to 23rd. Um, Nathan, where would Mike get more information about the brisket class? Prairie oh, dog, uh, yeah, Mike, you can email me if you want, and I can I can let you know when they're up and running. But it's run through Prairie Dog Brewing, just not far from our warehouse by Chinook Center. Um, they will be posting to their social media when it happens, uh, when they're when they're booking tickets. Um, we will be posting as well uh, on our Instagram story and our Twitter, uh, and possibly our mailing list. Um, but yeah, if you just email Nathan at knife uh, I'm, I'm happy to let you know, uh, they're kind of in the works right now. So we should hopefully have more classes booked like in a couple of weeks. Yeah. Oh, Benjamin was from Germany as well. Oh, nice. Interesting. Uh-huh. Interesting. And James, we know James down in oh, Los yeah? Angeles. Yeah. Right on. Um, I think that's it. Nalto's doing what makes a master knife sharpener next week. Yeah. We're going to uh, tell you to March 22nd at 1 p.m. Mountain time. So one week, one week, one week minus two hours from right now. <laughs> Set a timer. Set your timer. Set alarm. The E30 uh, birdies from Germany too. Oh, no kidding. Look at that. Old. Holy shit. Yeah, a lot of, a lot of friends in Germany. That's awesome. Uh, we've also got, uh, if you like shaving any part of your body, um, even just like the edges of your beard, like I'm doing right now, uh, our, sister store, our sister store, our sister store, Kenneth Inglewood. Oh yeah, you got to shave that chin again. Oh, they're coming for you, Chris. They heard you didn't shave. Oh shit, they heard I didn't shave. <laughs> if you don't yeah. want to get arrested by the razor police like Chris, uh, Kenneth Inglewood has a razor sale on. 15 25 percent off safety razors and straight razors and they're genuinely like uh if you think shaving sucks it's because it does uh i've i've always hated shaving uh, until i started using a single blade razor and it became something that i don't hate so give it a try oh i knew lavoog lordy cooking again <laughs> lordy got the fire department to come to the store that's why i did it I knew what was going to happen. Maybe it was all on purpose. You guys don't know. You guys yeah. don't know what I'm up to. Because I don't either. It was an inside job. It wasn't even fireman. It was just Alex in a in a firefighter costume. If I was going to get Alex to show up as a fireman, he wouldn't have a shirt on. And then Janine. Janine would love it. <laughs> Got the sexy fireman costume from the Halloween yeah. store. Yeah, it's just pants. It's just pants and a little plastic helmet. And with that, <laughs> on that I made Nathan enough. cry and I am par- embarrassed. Uh, he doesn't even know he's embarrassed yet, but I did it. <laughs> so. Right on. Well, thanks for tuning in, everybody. Oh, 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 oh. oh Brian, Brian snuck right. in with a good last question. One. This is the last one. Don't everyone else stop typing. This is it. Now reverse it's psychology, like, Chris. It's not gonna work. Yeah. Ah, uh, shit. I'm. This is like when you go to the grocery store and you hand the. Can you put this behind your groceries? And it's the find another line sign. Uh, I'm new to Japanese knives and looking to get my first. And wondering if Sunahisa knives would be a great, a good start for the price. Yes. Wow. Sunahisa knives are awesome. Beautiful high um, performance. Yeah. Yeah, I really like the handles. They're um, the Sunahisa, like it's the A2, like Algami number two, stainless on the outside, Tsuchime pattern. They got a really badass handle. I don't know what it is about them. Like the bolster has kind of got like this little slash, oh, yeah. like diagonal thing going on. Like the, the handles wall. are kind of carved out. Yeah, yeah. yeah, they're really cool. They're, yeah, they're nice. Yeah, they're to badass. Take. One of the reasons I'm not crazy about uh, like Western style handles is a lot of them are too chunky. Like I got big hands, but I don't like chunky handles, and that's why yeah. I like the Zero so much, and that's why I like those Sunahisas. They're like nicely yeah. angled off and yeah, ergonomic. yeah. They were paying paying attention when they finished them. That was a good last question. Yeah, 
Thanks, everybody. Hope you have a, a good rest of your week. Hmm. You too, Nathan. You have a good rest of your week. I, I will. Uh, oh, uh, real quick. If, if, oh, if, I already if, saluted. I know, I know lots of you have already commented and watched it, but uh, Nato's got a new video on the channel that came out uh, yesterday morning. Yeah. Uh, and it's all about knife finishes, how to get uh, like a really plain, simple, easy finish on your knife, uh, how to get a kasumi finish, and how to get a mirror polish. Um, and it's specifically oh, about sharpening the bevel of your knife. So for Japanese mm. knives, but taking it from looking real rough and, you know, upgrading it a little bit, but making it a little bit nicer. So, And if you want to see me get robbed in yet another competition, you can go back to the last Sharp Knives Rock. It's true. So, last week's episode. True. Quite good. Yep, it was. Yep. <laughs> I had more points than Nauto did at the end. Except for the judging. So it's always the judging, you know? I think we got to start outsourcing the judging, to be <laughs> yeah. honest. Yeah, you got to stop asking me to deal with numbers and times and stuff. Yeah, we got to get someone who at least pays attention. Yeah. Uh, well, thanks all for right. watching Nauta's video, E30 Birdie. Yeah. And thank you all for watching this video. We'll yeah. see you next time. There's a bunch of you today. It's fun. Yeah. All right. All right. Take it easy.